You're watching the People's Television, ABC Amber TV, the voice of Amberzonia. Stay tuned. You're watching the People's Television, ABC Amber TV, the voice of Amberzonia. Stay tuned. Amazonia's Independence Day 2023. Brazilians unveiled. Amazonians worldwide showcase heritage with pride in the October 1st, 2023 Independence Day commemoration. Defiant after seven years of conflict. October 1st Independence Day commemorations this year was simply unique. It was a defiant jubilation. Amazonia's seven-year stand for sovereignty captured a global spotlight. Indeed, as the crimson hues of dawn crept over the virgin hills of Amazonia, the air was already pulsating with a rhythm of unwavering resistance. October 1st, 2023 marks the seventh anniversary of what has been a bold assertion of identity and demand for autonomy that has the world's attention. The people of Amazonia, with a spirit as unyielding as the mountains that cradle their homeland, gathered in a defiant celebration of their steadfast journey towards self-determination. Despite years of struggle and the formidable challenges that lay ahead, their collective resolve remains a beacon of hope to all nations. just the Amazonian Restoration Forces demonstrating and showcasing military might. It was a nation that less than a decade ago was at the precipice of nullification, now demonstrating military might and willingness to be totally free from occupation. Such a great evolution in a revolution we have witnessed within a very short time. Remember, these volunteers we now call the Amazonian Restoration Forces started with their bare hands, protecting the women and children of Amazonia from the French Cameroon's brutality. We saw them evolve from that into dame guns, and look at where they are today. The interesting part for me was how these guys were able to coordinate the civilian population. We saw the Amazonian Restoration Forces leading dance groups, 
giving speeches of encouragement and sharing food with the local communities. It was simply heartwarming. To even think of the fact that these restoration forces are the same forces Yaoundé and her proxy media wants the world to believe that they are oppressing their people. On the contrary, we saw a local population that felt safe in front of our armed men. That alone is proof of itself that I don't think words can provide. When images from different nations in the world started popping in a different fora and social media platforms, I couldn't resist but get lost in the beauty of them. It is one thing to watch such beautiful images, but it is another thing to be actively involved in the making. Just looking at these images and you literally want to relieve the moment. Where comrades who have never known each other meet up for a unique experience. The nostalgia, the faith of freedom was rekindled. It was not just the Ambazonian Restoration Forces, nor the protest marches in different parts of the world, like Berlin, Austria, Brazil, the United States, and more. The fearless demonstrations at the home front were from almost every local government area and county. Our people at the home front, especially in the areas that were not heavily militarized by the forces of occupation, came out in large numbers and colors, with both old and young, dancing, marching, and enjoying traditional music, food, and fresh beauties. Home, sweet home, for them. Watching the fearless demonstrations at the home front from almost every local government and county was really exhilarating and lifted my spirit. Both young and old danced, marched, and enjoyed traditional moments. The freedom to fully express ourselves in our colors and rhythms looking at these images happens to be a shocking reality in our day. The question on everybody's lips was, did you get your amber wrapper? It was one unique aspect of the October 1st celebration this year which was literally the Ambazonian historic cloth or the wrapper. Anticipation was high and everywhere people were talking about the amber wrapper. It was like the new emblem of the Federal Republic of Ambazonia and it was almost as if there would be no October 1st commemoration without it. On the day of the celebrations, everywhere was illuminated with this symbolic wrapper. The amber wrapper was selling like hotcakes. A newly declared holiday, the UN Southern Cameroon's Memorial Day was commemorated. The declaration of this new holiday by President Sacco, the United Nations Southern Cameroon's Memorial Day for September 30th, 2023 came with its own energy and Ambazonians were passionate about it. And like President Sako explained, on that day, 62 years ago, the United Nations handed over the Union Jack to Cameroon instead of Foncha, thereby facilitating the annexation of Southern Cameroons. It was crucial to officially recognize this day so the future generations will revisit the truth and understand the historical significance of this event. On that note, Ambazonians eagerly took to the streets of the world with posters and placards saying, the UN Southern Cameroons Memorial Day. It was such a beauty to watch. Military manifesto of the Ambazonian Restoration Forces at home front in combination with the diaspora manifestations. The proper coordination showed some great sense of leadership and a force that was loved by the people. 
Refugees received gifts, a positive representation of the Amazonian government's support and willingness to serve its people at all levels. It has always been the intention of President Sacco to extend the celebrations to Amazonian refugees, not only in neighboring Nigeria, but in other parts of the world. As you can see, they receive support and solidarity from the government. This display of care and inclusivity highlighted the government's understanding of the fact that the impact of the conflict is not just limited to the people at the home front, but all Amazonians. The global celebrations, I would say, was one very strategic way to rally support from the international community. The international community is beginning to engage with the legitimate Ambazonian government. The Ambazonian people are unified in their quest for freedom. The display of strength and enthusiasm for their duties by the Amazonian Restoration Forces sends a potent message that La Republic to Cameroon should not ignore. If Cameroonian authorities continue to delay and fail to engage in negotiations properly as they mourn their casualties that is an increasing number, they will not be long before Amazonia decisively expels them from the Amazonian national territory and such an outcome will be marked by their utmost humiliation. The atmosphere of the October 1st commemoration in Amazonia was one of hope resilience and unity. The Ambazonian people are determined. Ambazonia is free. Should strengthen the hands of those of us who are free to fight till the end. We are on the same tree and anyone who tells you we are trying to cut down this tree is sick and is a sick demagogue. Shun all propaganda attacks on those of us who are still fighting for all of us. Don't play the power game while in captivity. That's a comedy to your captors. And you don't have to be our friend or my friend. Just don't make us your enemies. Unless you don't care anymore about the fight we chose to embark on. In the name of our ancestors, from Augustine Gomjua, to Molanjo Litume. Please, we did not have more than one government in the southern Cameroons in 1961, even though we had many political formations. So what we have collectively restored is that one government that we had. In the United States, that name and its logo are trademarked and protected. We are happy we arrived here only after our interim structure had been vandalized and ridiculed by haters and power mongers. Hence, the restoration of the government of Southern Cameroon and Bazonia marks the end of an era of confusion. The international community may no longer tell us they do not know the authority structure in Ambazonia. Yes, we have many voices, but we have one government. We have many leaders, but one government. We have many activists, but one government. This government, the government of Southern Cameroon and Ambazonia, also known as the government of Federal Republic of Ambazonia, is like the mother, the mother hen that gathers its chicks. It is the umbrella that covers all Amazonians and the shed that shelters every Southern Cameroonian. We pledge to do what Foncha did when he was at the helm of this government. He led a delegation to Fumban that included opposition members. Our government shall do the same when a genuine opportunity for immediate settlement is presented. Foncha in 1994 led a delegation of Southern Cameroon leaders from different political formations to the United Nations to seek redress for our failed union with La Republic du Cameroon. Our government will do the same 
as we approach the United Nations again. No government works for or represents only those who voted for it or those who like it. I utter these words with utmost conviction and hope that those who differ with us will work with us for our common good. In the coming days, we will be rolling out a project to facilitate and welcome our comrades who are ready to join our, our ranks again. Just like Foncha in 1961, we will mobilize certain Cameroon leaders, irrespective of their political formation, to work with us. We are determined to work with others outside this government to any table where our fate collectively as a people shall be decided. Our experience in rallying Good evening, fellow Ambazonians. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Ambazonia This Week with Ta Pariki. The excerpt you just watched there was a peak of an address by President Samuel Ikomet Sako to the nation of Ambazonia on the 31st of December, 2023, ushering Ambazonia into 2024, a year he admonishes Ambazonians to stay focused, resilient, and united. You just heard President Sacco promising that under his mentorship, the government of Ambazonia will initiate a platform that will accommodate every willing Ambazonian in spite of your affiliation. That sounds like good. But this is not where we begin tonight's conversation. The table seems to be turning as the recent move by the by Ethiopia to establish treaty with Somaliland appears to be some sort of an official recognition of the sovereignty of Somaliland. This has raised hopes for the people of Ambazonia, a nation at the precipice of nullification through French Cameroon hegemony, seeking recognition as well. The recognition of Somaliland as a separate and sovereign state by the Ethiopian government has given new impetus to the Ambazonian independence movement as it demonstrates that international recognition is not just some illusion. It is possible for oppressed peoples in modern day seeking self-determination. The chances for Ambazonia to gain similar recognition from the international community of friendly nations are now looking more promising than ever before. The recognition of Somaliland by the Ethiopia sends a strong signal to other nations that the right to self-determination is a legitimate aspiration for people living in regions seeking independence. This provides a sense of hope and encouragement for the Ambazonian people who are now on a full-scale project to ensure recognition of their nation from international partners. But there is a twist. The nation of Somalia is totally disinclined to the agreement of any shape or form between Somaliland and Ethiopia. The United States of America has made statements that seem to suggest that they are in agreement with Somalia on this stance. The U.S. recognizes the borders, in quotes, of Somalia as established during their independence in 1960. Here comes the history you would like to know. On the 1st of July, 1960, the trust territory of Somaliland, the former Italian Somaliland, and the former British Somaliland, talking about two nations, united to form the nation you call Somali Republic, with Mogadishu as the nation's capital. This day is celebrated as Somalia's Independence Day. But something happened less than a week before this day. What happened that led to the crisis 
and subsequent speed. The state of Somaliland today, which is also known as the British Somaliland, formally achieved independence from the United Kingdom on June 26, 1960. The state of Somaliland merged with Italian Somaliland to form the Republic of Somalia just four days or about five days later. As we were processing the news, we came across reports, but there's this report with Voice of America that caught our attention. And I believe that is what will usher us or will lay a stage for the debate we'll be having with Barrister Ghana, Barrister Timbe Seha, Barrister Fru, and Eso Ezama this evening. I'd like you to watch that report. It's just about two minutes. And right after that, our conversation will begin. Stay tuned. The historic, but Somalia is calling it a blatant assault. What's likely to happen next? What's likely to happen next is uh, diplomatic challenges in terms of uh, Somalia using the forums of uh, the East African community, the Africa Union, and the UN to push back against what it feels is an encroachment on its um, national territory. We also tend, we'll see a diplomatic challenges between uh, Mogadishu and uh, Addis Ababa uh, with this situation. But we could also potentially see uh, an escalation of war. Uh, Somalia is still very weak right now, but with Ethiopia making claims on Somaliland through this agreement, uh, rebel groups like Al-Shabaab will use that to justify mobilization and terrorist attacks against uh, Ethiopia because uh, Somalia might feel this is a major encroachment on its uh, territorial integrity. So I think we, going forward, we really see tension at the diplomatic, political and uh, economic levels. Uh, but some would say Somaliland has uh, governed itself for 30 years, uh, Professor. It has also, it has its own constitution, its own currency. Some say it has largely been peaceful, maybe more than some of the neighbor and uh, neighboring countries. But, but can Somalia claim Somaliland? And why hasn't the African Union recognized this country as a nation, a state that can rule itself? The AU has not recognized uh, Somaliland because uh, of the long-standing legacies of the Organization of African Unity and the, um, the AU to respect the uh, colonial boundaries uh, of um, the independent African states. So the AU is very careful not to set a precedent here because by recognizing Somaliland, then you'll have uh, other separatist um, regimes in countries like uh, Cameroon, um, in countries like Nigeria, all over the continent pushing to also become independent. The other element is, uh, even in spite of Somaliland wanting to be independent, the major uh, global powers in, within the UN the U.S., the EU, China, Russia, they have not been very enthusiastic about giving um, Somaliland its independence, also for political and, uh, and uh, diplomatic reasons. But lastly, the big, bigger challenge for Somaliland here and what it's trying to do is to get more allies to really push for its um, separation from Somalia. And I think this uh, agreement with... That's, that's a major concern, right? We are gentlemen, we are live, Barista Ghana. Thank, Thank you for joining this conversation at this time. Barista Tim, I think we're live already. Good sauce, try to warm it, get some that brand. But there's nothing we can do now. There is a sound on the background. Yeah, I think that has been soft. Is it okay right now? yeah yeah that the sound was coming from barista Mbesea, and uh i just muted his sound barista Mbesea, perhaps you want to consider working on your environment so that we can have this conversation barista ghana it's been a while good evening and welcome thank you it's a pleasure to be here greetings to my senior colleagues uh, happy new year to them 2024 is upon us 
and the march of Ambazonia for full-scale regaining of her sovereignty is fully on. So it's, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, we are marching fully forward. That's amazing. Um, uh, Barista, uh, uh, Fru, perhaps you want to greet the audience before we commence. Okay. Uh, Ambazonians, dear Ambazonians all over the world, particularly in the home front, Happy New Year. Uh, this is a new year and a new and a new impetus in the struggle for our liberation. Uh, we have we have together analyzed issues since last year, 2023, and today is the first <coughs> edition of this program in 2024, and uh, uh, we intend to continue to bring analysis and uh, information to our people around the world, particularly in the home front, that our, our march to freedom is sure, and uh, this year, a, a, a year of focus is a year that may bring us to Boya together. Thank you very much for receiving me, buddy. Amazing. But ba Barista Mbesa, I want to believe your sound is okay now. <laughs> uh, thank you for having us. This is 2024, the first week of January. And we're essentially here today because of the events happening in Somalia, in Somaliland. They, 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 they reveal a lot in the structure of our struggle in January 2024. Munitions are gone all the time. Ambazonia is not new. But if anything, if we look back, the issue of Somaliland did not start in 2000. It started in 1991. And so for 30 years, they have been on the march to full independence. They're having it gradually. You don't expect it to happen in a day. But they're having it because the work are already contain events that they can. Somalia can protest. That is normal. Somalia will not determine the future of, of uh, Somaliland. Because they've lost control of that territory since, 2000, since 1991. They have nothing to control there. The Americans can be shy. The British can be shy. But the fact is, Somaliland has finally gained impetus. They are moving. And if we take a cure from them, it does remain adamant. It does remain focused. They fought for 30 years. We have just been in the seven year. I'm sure we are succeeding. Very on the legs or not. Thank you once more for having us. Gebarista Ghana, and this is exactly where we begin our conversation. That nation called Somalia was born out of a merger between two um, colonies that were seeking for independence. One was a trusteeship territory under um, the British. The United it was a United Nations trusteeship territory under the custody of, of Italy. And then the Somali land of today was under United Kingdom. And that makes their story almost similar to ours. It would appear that in many different parts around Africa, Britain actually really didn't complete their job. But I'm also made to understand that this was a legal union that will cost so dearly a nation that has been seeking for recognition for over 30 years. And now I would like you to begin <coughs> with the historicity of the struggle of Somaliland and how Ambazonia can learn from it. Talk to us, Barrister Kanak. Uh, yes, Paddy, and again, uh, greetings to all the viewers around the world, greetings to all Ambazonians, uh, greetings to all inspired uh, people of Ambazonia who believe and trust that our freedom is nearer than the, than we thought. For actually, it is nearer than we thought. Uh, some of these problems that we have around the world where you have countries that are holding on to territories that do not belong to them always come apart. They always explode. 
we have given a lot of examples on this forum. We've given the examples of Yugoslavia, we've given the examples of East Timor, we've given the examples of South Africa trying to hold on to Namibia, we've given the examples of Southern Sudan, now we are on to the case of Somali and also the case of Ambazonia. Long live Ambazonia. Now, the British, coming from the 40s, the 50s, and the 60s, had some trusteeship territories in Africa. And those trusteeship ter 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 territories included uh, Tanzania, they, include, they included British Togo land, they included Ambazonia, they included Somali land. And the British did not do their job. They didn't do their job. They were involved in what we call in law self-dealing. They were involved in what we call self-dealing. And that's why Britain does not want to open this chapter. I want to prophesy something. Britain is going to be held legally responsible for all of these breaches of its duty to these territories that have led to so many deaths. Ambazonia is a case in point. Somaliland is, is a case in point. Namibia is, 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 is a, well, the British were not, were not the ones responsible for Namibia. That was more of a 19, uh, or, 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 or 1919 uh, agreement when, where, where the Boers and the South Africans were put in charge of that ter territory. However, Somaliland and Somalia were never one and the same country. And if you go to uh, uh, December uh, 15, 1960, the United Nations in Resolution 1514 gave the marching orders, gave the rule. That was a General Assembly resolution. It said, give all countries and trust territories independence irrespective of their economic status or preparedness for independence said so give them independence did britain do that in somaliland no it didn't did uh britain do that in ambazonia no it didn't and it's coming back to buy the international community on its butt and another aspect also is that these territories that are being held captive that are being annexed that is an attempt to recolonize them are being done by force they are not being done by the will of the people in somalia they were able to perpetuate that nonsense on somaliland through the brute force of siad Barre. and siad Barre is the former leader of somalia and when that brute force came to an end when siad Barre was holed up in an air in, at the airport in in mogadishu in 1991 pleading for his own uh, 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 clemency, Somaliland became free. Fast forward to Ambazonia. How is Ambazonia being held captive? Ambazonia has been held captive first by the brute force of Ahijo and replacing Ahijo with Forbia. And that is why Cameroon has had one, a, 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 a continuous stream of a dictator, dictatorship because the CPDM under Forbia is just an extended form of the CNU. So it is that conglomerate, CNU, CPDM, brutal force that has kept Ambazonia in, in check. And just like it happened under Siad Barre in 1991 in Mogadishu, it will happen in Yaoundé. When this morally decrepit, bankrupt underachievers in Yaoundé under the CPDM collapsed, Ambazonian sovereignty will finally be regained, no doubt. So this is just what is happening in, 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 in Somalia with Ethiopia rightfully recognizing Somaliland as an independent territory, which is backed by international law, which is backed by UN Resolution 1514XV, which is one of the same resolutions that backs the independence on, 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 on Ambazonia. And Ambazonia's case is even further strengthened by the fact that on April 21st, 1961, the UN General Assembly made to declare and to vote on the independence of the Southern Cameroons, a.k.a. Ambazonia. I would like my co 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 colleagues to weigh in, 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 in on that. But the picture of our independence 
not uh, in, we already we Ambazonia is already independent. The question is not independent. The question is regaining our sovereignty. The question of regaining our sovereignty is becoming transparently clear. We are not going back to captivity. We are going forward to freedom. Barista, so Barista Mbessa, help me out here. That, that's amazing. Barista, Barista, <laughs> Fred, perhaps you want to chime in there, please. Yes, before I say what I have to say, I'd like to celebrate the recognition of Somaliland by Ethiopia. Ethiopia it has made history by being the first African country to recognize Somaliland. And who is going to which is going to who is going to be the first African country to recognize the Southern Cameroon Ambazonia? That's the question. Now, I will start by looking at how the imperialists are fighting to be relevant on the African continent. If anybody thinks that the recognition of Somalia and it's, uh, 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 as of its boundaries of 1960 by the United States is by is by accident or is by political calculation. It is a very serious political maneuver by the United States because first looking backward, the Russians have made overtures. To Somaliland. I read that in a magazine and I read it on social media and it is clear that the Russians have made overtures to Somaliland. What has happened this week, the very first week of 2024, by the United States is very significant. The arrival of the Secretary of Defense, Lloyd Johnson, in Angola, in Luanda, Angola, and his speech in Angola, immediately followed by the recognition of Somalia by the United States. Somalia had independence since 1960. Somaliland had their independence before Somalia. Or what 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 that part of Somalia that was owned by the Italians or controlled by Italians they were not yet independent but Somaliland had its independence from the British it is intriguing it is intriguing that the United States has recognized Somalia as of 1960 Somaliland had independence in July, I mean, on, in, in June 1960. And Somal, Somalia had the same, it, it was preparing for independence on the 4th, uh, on the 20th, I think the 4th of July, 1960. And no, on, that day, wait, 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 on that same day, on that same day, on that, on that same day, on that same day, Somaliland unified with Italian Somalia. Yeah, with Italian Somaliland, it was uh, it was the UN. Yes, it was a yes. The two were UN trust territory, one handled by the British, the other by the Italians. Yeah. The first to have independence was Somaliland. Yeah. On the 26th of yes, on the 26th of on the 26th of June 1960. The second independence was the two was was the the, the trust territory of the Italians on the on uh, in July 4th. And the 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 unification of the two on the same July 4th. That brought in the there was no there was no cost there was no there was no united nations uh, agreement 
for the two to get together. It was it was agreed by the parties themselves to get together. Therefore, their case is very different from the case of the Southern Cameroon when it comes to this merger. For the case of Southern Cameroon, I want to take us back to 1959, the Mafia Conference. The vote that our people, our political leaders, parliamentarians, chiefs, uh, civil society, and, and the political parties, everybody met in Manfi in 1959 and debated our independence. La Republic de Cameroon was not part of that debate. It was either we stay with Nigeria, either we, 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 go, we, we join with Nigeria to have independence or we have our independence. 67% voted for us to have independence. And Foncha took that resolution. And I want to indicate that a British representative, a British diplomat was in attendance. He took that resolution to the United Nations. How come the United Nations developed this issue of two alternatives, including the Republic of Cameroon? It remains a mystery. That, that is when they started forcing us into a union against our will as expressed in the Mafia Conference. Actually, what, what you are reaffirming there is that our supposed unification or attempted relation or experimental relationship with Cameroon was premised on manipulation and probably intimidation. And this is where exactly it was manipulation by it, it was manipulation by the British in connivance with the French at the United Nations to say the British said we were not right, we didn't have the uh, we were not economically viable to have independence. But our people had decided that give us our independence in 1959 in Manfi by that vote. They kept our vote aside. They didn't look at the 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 the, the, the will of the people. The the British and the French made a presentation at the United Nations and they came up with these two two alternatives. And they forced a they forced they forced a, a, a plebiscite on us on the 11th of February, and then resolution 1601, I mean 1608, came on the on, on the 21st of April 1961 to define that joining, still without consultation with us. And that resolution was voted against by La Republic of Cameroon. Why did the United Nations not take that, that? Why did the United Nations not take the will of our people? Why did they continue to accept people who did not want uh, us to have independence or to unite with us? The people whom they are forcing us to unite with did not accept to unite with us by that vote. Why did the United Nations stay quiet to allow us go through this hell? Why was the, the British quiet on this issue? The British who were supposed to have attended a conference with us and the, with our government and that of the government of La Republic of Cameroon to decide on the, the, the way forward, how the, 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 two, the two countries, the two trust territories will be managed, will manage themselves in a treaty, ran away, they never, they never showed up and were left alone. And the rest, we all know. So yeah, that is a marked difference. That is a marked difference between. Mr. Well, let me finish. What I, let me finish my thought. That is a marked difference between Somaliland and Somalia, and of course, and and the the, the created Somalia because the 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 one managed by the managed by the Italians. We don't know what name it was, but when they got together they got the name Somali Republic. And you see, uh, like my colleague has just said, something will have to happen in Yaoundé, and I'm, I'm predicting that it will happen, because Yaoundé has become not only, not only a, 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 a regime against the Southern Cameroons, but a regime against the people of the Republic of Cameroon. 
if you look at the number of murders that have taken place in La Republic du Cameroon, it's orchestrated by a bank, a, a, a group of people in the presidency of La Republic du Cameroon, you will know that that regime is going to fall anytime soon. And when it does, we will we will be home free, like my colleague has just said. Hallelujah. Okay, let's try to be, be a little bit brief about comments because we have a very we have a lot to cover today, and I hope that we'll be able to cover it all. Now I'm getting back to you, so we can we we've had the historicity of the Somaliland movement uh, well established when Barista Ghana was speaking. I'm coming to you, Barista Mbesa. Please, perhaps you want to talk to us. Look at this nation that was born on the 1st of July, 1960. What probably would have happened? It would appear that the minority that was the former British Somaliland, which is now seeking for recognition today, had almost the same, exact same concerns that uh, Southern Cameroons would have in their experimental relationship with the Republic of Cameroon. Please talk to us. Uh, Why the, is that? The issue, the issue here is this. You see, I don't want to go my body myself with the history. Let us deal with this simple, straightforward thing. We all know that practically in life, forced marriages don't work. Even if a woman is forced into your house, and you rape her and give her seven kids, it does not change the character of a forced marriage. And this is what happened in 1960 with Somaliland. It happened with Ambazonia. But uh, Ghana has quoted since 1514, which clearly stated that if countries must join, let them have their independence, join on their own terms. That has been experimented essentially in Africa. Senegal had its independence apart. Uh, Gambia had its independence apart. In spite of its small size, they decided to form Senegambia. It did not work. They parted ways. And so, uh, Tanganyika had its independence apart. The island of Zanzibar had its independence apart. They decided to come together and form Tan Tan uh, Tanzania. For them, it has worked because it's a free will of the people. Now, when we see what's happening in Somalia, it's not just the British. It is the British who are colonial masters and the West in general have to understand this. Who is the Trump card? Who is the master card player in the issue of Somalia and the Horn of Africa? The main player who matters most is not America. It's not even Great Britain. It's not Italy. It is Ethiopia. Ethiopia formed a federation with, uh, with Eritrea. That's a fact. But because of the agreed, they decided to abolish the federation, the Ethiopians. And the Eritrea said, no, it will not work. They let Emperor Haile Selassie fought and killed them. Did everything he could. It did not work. In 1990, 1992, the Ethiopian government had to recognize uh, Eritrea. They were forced to do it. And so you, you take it down to where it is. Why does Ethiopia matter a lot? Those of us who know history, we have heard that Ethiopia was never colonized. That's the truth. But they, they failed to colonize them, it was not because they were so powerful. No, they were no different from Cameroon or from in our country. No, they were just the same. But they had one advantage. The colonizers came by boat. They came through the sea. Ethiopia then, and today, has no access to the sea. It's a landlocked country. And that's why they thought that they could colonize Eritrea and own the port of Asmara. It did not work. They were forced to recognize the independence of Eritrea. But since then, the things have not worked the way they thought. The relationship between Ethiopia and, uh, and Eritrea is not so good. They have no access to the sea. And so Somaliland is there without access to the sea. 
Even if they had access in Eritrea, they need a second road. And so they recognize Somalia for that technical reason, which the Americans cannot stop them, which the British cannot stop them. Yes, I read that the Somalia uh, government has withdrawn its ambassador from, from Addis Ababa. And so what? It makes no difference. These people are gone. And that is how Africa should be. You see, they can do all that. The Americans can say what they say. The Americans have been in the Horn of Africa for the, since 1960. What are they doing there? What are they doing there? The CIA has been there forever. They've been fighting in Djibouti. Why are they putting so much resources there? Their goal is to secure a free, uh, free navigation through the Horn of Africa to the Red Sea. And so it has not worked. Somaliland, which has been in control of this area for the past 30 years, was in need, pretending to be in control of Somaliland, when they have effectively asserted themselves, asserted themselves for the past 30 years. And so that is where the crux of the matter is. This issue of federation left and right, which was the pan work of the British. Because wherever I have these problems, they're from the British colonial masters. That's the mantra. It did not work. I don't know where they made a mistake, but by now they realize that what they wanted to do, because they were not joining those things for the interests of the people who were there. They were not asking Ambassador to join with French Cameroon or Nigeria because they loved Ambazonia. No. They had an interest to secure Ambazonia. I'm very sure in 1960, the British knew the worth that lay underneath the land of Ambazonia. They knew it. The oil was not discovered after 1960. They knew it. See, they wanted to own it. And they fabricated these unions, which have turned out not working. And so, sure, uh, Somali lands of state, they are subsidiary. Even if you seem fine, the countries are not recognized in the same date. When Ethiopia recognizes them, they have not yet recognized them. They have simply signed an agreement with them. But you don't sign an agreement with somebody who does not have control. The Ethiopians, where the, the, the African Union is headquartered, have lots of allies, even in the African continent. They have allies around the world, including China. So their, their, their move is important, very, very important. For the Chinese who are looking for an inroad into Africa, who are looking into an inroad into the Horn of Africa in particular, it is important for the Americans who are thought that that was a pre, uh, that was a preserve. That's why when you read what the that the State Department guy said, you read all those things with care. He did not say they will not recognize uh, somebody now. He simply said, as of now, for example. Who recognize the independence of Somali, Somalia, Somalia, from 1960. That's what they are maintaining us. They know what happened to us, but they need a different step. A further step to say, look, as of 1960, these people are different people. They have secured their own rights, and so you cannot continue to colonize them. If the Americans could do so to Southern Sudan, Southern Sudan was an integral part of Sudan. They didn't have the history of Somaliland. They didn't have the history of Djibouti. They didn't have the history of Amazonia. But the Americans are the ones who first recognize them and realize that these people needed their own homeland. And whether they like it or not, Sudan, Southern Sudan, is there. It's there. It's a country on its own. The Sudanese government had to capitulate. And the, the Somalia government is going to capitulate because they have lost. Uh, Somaliland since 1990. They haven't been there. So they're hanging off to a, 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 a share. What did they get out of it? The Americans have realized that the only way you maintain peace for free navigation in the Horn of Africa is to recognize Somaliland because they control a chunk of the territory. And if you don't do it, they are fighters whom you call terrorists. But for 30 years, the American CIA has not been able to defeat them. So you have to bend down, accept the facts as they are, and they are accepting it. There's, there's a critical argument. 
uh, by Stambesa. I, I want to I want us to shift it a little bit when it comes to looking at legalities. And I'm coming to you, Barista uh, Ghana. There's a critical argument that is on the table. A tweet that was published, I think, a few days ago by her go by Hago Gay. It says the position of it, it, that, that's just in line with some of the treaties we have quoted earlier. It says the position of the African Union is clear is very clear on the case of Somaliland. It says Somaliland is neither a secessionist state nor is the restoration statehood of Somaliland violating the territorial integrity of another state. We're talking about legality. We've, we've ex <coughs> exhaustively examined the historicity. So we're talking about the legality of the movement. So it's also consistent with the AU colonial borders treaty signed in Cairo in 1964. So the silence of the AU is has no no impact because by default somaliland is a nation so somalia was the only country to reject the au's colonial borders because of their ethno expansionist dramas of annexing the ethiopian somali region somaliland's position is consistent with that of the AU. And this brings me to the question, Barrister Ghana. You just watched the video from Voice of America with this political analyst actually saying that, suggesting that some of the reasons why Africa, the AU, and some African states are somewhat disinclined or playing the silent card could probably be because they do not want to set the wrong precedent. And this brings Abazinia into the picture. He, specifically mention the Cameroons. What would you think or say? And looking at this complexity in international relations and diplomacy. You see, this is not really about a question of precedent. This is more of a question of legality. You have yeah. this, this, these legal grenades that are embedded in these injustices waiting to blow up you have you have these legal grenades that are embedded in these uh, injustices waiting to blow up and the situation in ambazonia there are so many legal grenades right under the rear ends of, of la republic waiting to blow out and they will blow out you just talked about the cairo declaration of 1964 which somalia Ref, uh, refused to vote for but uh, 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 it, it did not make it non-binding it did not make it non-applicable across the whole of africa and that resolution is is, is reflected in 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 the african au charter article 4b that clearly states that the borders of african states remain as they are and as they were inherited from the colonial masters. Now, they can change their borders by having a, 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 a political union based on consultation with both or the multiple countries that want to unite. For example, if Senegal, as Baris Ambassador said, if Senegal wants to unite with Gambia based on laid out rules, they can change their borders and consistent with the dictates of the AU and the United Nations, they have to deposit that agreement there to show that those borders have changed. That is not the case with Ambazonia and French Cameroon. There is nothing at the, at the UN that, that demonstrates, manifests, underscores, iterates how those, the borders of La Republique as of January 1st, 1960 have changed. Absolutely nothing that binds Ambazonia with La Republic. But you also said something that is very pertinent to what we are talking about. You said Somalia rejected that Cairo, Cairo Declaration of 1964, which meant they were against the AU uh, Charter Article 4B. What is the similarity with French Cameroon? Hello, drum roll. French Cameroon voted against UN Resolution 
1608 on April 21st, 1961. French Cameroon voted against it. French Cameroon voted against the proposed union between Saudi Cameroon and French Cameroon. So there is, there is, in terms of the question of legality, which, 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 which I talked about, there is nothing that binds Ambazonia with French Cameroon. They are a hostile occupying power against the, 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 the rules of the AU, against UN resolutions. So this is not a question of precedent. This is a question of legality, because legality will, will demonstrate uh, uh, the, the rules how those states are supposed to be together. And going back to what Barista Mbessa said, and Barista Mbessa beautifully articulated the Manfrey Conference of, of, of 1959, where the leaders of the Southern Cameroons meeting in an all-party union or in, a, in, a, in an all-party conference decided by a 67% supermajority that the question on the plebiscite should not should not be uh, a question of joining uh, Nigeria or joining La Republic. It should be a question of joining Nigeria as a separate province of Nigeria and becoming utterly independent. Again, as Barista Mbessa said, the influence of the French and the British in the decolonization committee against international law, against international rules, is what messed up the whole situation. What else happened in the decolonization committee at the UN? Iraq decried what was happening. China, Ambassador uh, Siang, representing China, said it outrightly that this was a case of outright annexation of the Southern Cameroons. What else happened? The US representative, Congressman Zabloki, said this was wrong and it would be catastrophic for the political future of the Southern Cameroons. So the red lines were all over that what they were doing in the decolonization committee was wrong. What else happened to enable this injustice to go through? The United Nations Decolonization Committee wanted to assign lawyers to the Southern Cameroons Conference, to the Southern Cameroons delegation, so that they will be able to advise them of their rights. What did France and Britain do in the decolonization committee? They argued and stopped it from happening. How can you stop a nation that is being recognized as a sovereign nation and is, and is being voted its independence not to have lawyers to, to advise them? What did UN Secretary General Das Hamadjok do? He said this was wrong. He wanted to meet with Foncha. He wanted to meet with Foncha so that if Britain thought the Southern Cameroons was not economically sustainable, uh, that's Hamadjok said, Foncha should come directly to him at the UN and he would be able to continue supporting the Southern Cameroons. What did the British do? Because the Southern Cameroons was attached or were, were communicating to, with the UN through their, uh, uh, through their high commissioner in Lagos, they blocked Foncha from being able to travel back to the UN. That is why Lord Thompson, a British member of parliament, decried it. That was what was being done to the Southern Cameroons was a breach of duty. He said the Southern Cameroons was not Britain's to deal with. Britain had the duty of the trusteeship, uh, 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 or the guardian administrator, to look at and for the interest of the Southern Cameroons. So the red lines were all over. Let's dig, dig a little deeply into the CIA classified cables. When Britain was spewing all of those lies in the General Assembly that the Southern Cameroons was not economically sustainable. If you read the declassified uh, 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 cables of the CIA, the CIA in the, in, in, in the Southern Cameroons was sending, a message to, sending messages to Washington saying that this territory is economically sustainable telling Washington that resources in the Southern Cameroons are even being used to sustain the Northern Cameroons. And the CIA cables gave specific examples. Those specific examples included the fact that the Bamenda Hospital that, 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 that is built, 
the CIA said Britain is claiming that the resources to build that Bamenda hospital came from Nigeria, and the CIA cables were saying it was lies. The, those resources were generated from the Saudi Cameroons. So Britain was lying and giving all kinds of misjustifications that the Saudi Cameroons could not sustain itself just to promote and foster this bastardized union that is going to fall apart. So again, it is not a question of precedent. It's a question of legality. And that, that grenade of legality that is under the rear end of, 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 of La Republic, that is under the rear end of France, is going to explode. And the Saudi Cameroons, aka Ambazonia's independence, has already been delivered. Our sovereignty is coming sooner than our adversaries think and sooner than our adversaries want it. Thank you. That's amazing. Uh, um, uh, fortunately, we have uh, um, uh, SOS uh, Sylvester Zaman here. But I would like the two lawyers, Barista Fru and Barista Mbisa, to regard to, to re okay. on this issue of okay. the okay. movement okay. so that we can, we can make advancement with Sylvester Zama on what we need to do on the ground to make sure that we take our ground. I did, I, I did not quite get you. There's, there's noise. There's noise that made me. I didn't get you, uh, buddy. Repeat that again. Uh, let me give, uh, let me mute um, uh, SOS Zama. The noise was coming from his iron. So I was saying that um, um, Barista Ghana has illustrated the legality of the Somalian movement in comparison with the Amazonian movement so beautifully. And I like the both of you to react um, succinctly in that regard now that we have fortunately the man in chief of uh, of the home front uh defense or should i say an army like like our laws have stipulated to tell us what we need to do on the ground he has approximately 30 minutes to be with us but i like the both of you to succinctly add your voices on this legal note of the the move the, the two movements put together as i begin with you barista Fro. Yes, uh, before I say anything, I'd like to correct Barista, Barista, Barista uh, Ghana. I was the one who developed the, the, the thesis of the Mafia Conference of 1959, not Barista Mbesa. Thank you very much. Now, secondly, now, we have established, we have, we, we, have, we have established, we have established the fact that what happened in Somalia before it be, be, before it's before it separated from to somaliland before it separated from somalia it's not the same thing that happened to us all that was what happened to us was a false union against the will of the people of the southern cameroons orchestrated and put together by the british and the french in the United Nations, in the Decolonization Committee. They killed us there. They will not listen to anybody. Now, how do we, how do we actualize this, what is happening now? It's by, it's by increasing the firepower on the ground. Because La Republic is finished. How is it finished? It is, it is it is being demonstrated by legal scholars in La Republic and, and around La Republic that La Republic is becoming a fair state. They are killing their citizens. They are, the, the judicial system is breaking down. Everything is breaking down. They don't have, they are, they are, they are, they are, their own leader is telling the world that they don't have money in their treasury. This is our time to put pressure let them whatever they have now they should remove it and spend it or they let us go or they or they stop this war or if they don't stop this war we will stop it for them and they will go down they will go down along with this war this year i'm talking to our defense people this year you must put everything together to go after not only their forces but there are structures that are in the southern Cameroons. 
all their structures, including bridges that are leading us, that that lead that leave our country into them, including any kind of connection, any kind of communication between them and ourselves. These are legitimate targets for this year. That is why the president calls this year a year of focus. Focus on the struggle. Focus on the the the, the modus operandi of the war. Focus on what results we intend to achieve this year and arrive home in Boya this year. That is a challenge to the Amazonian state forces, state army. And I like to also say that we should we should be encouraged to call the West Southern Cameroons now going forward because the diplomatic community is listening to us. Well, I'm not saying we should not use Ambazonia, but we should use Ambazonia sparingly and use mostly the Southern Cameroons government or, or, or the Federal Republic of Ambazonia. That's a debate we're going to Thank bring you. another day. A lot of people have concerns. Now, Barista Mbesa, I still want to take you to add your voice on the legality before um, Sylvester Zama ushers us in into what we as Amazonians need to do on the ground. We're also going to get into what we need to do with our diplomacy. Are we comfortable with the, what is happening? What are some of the lessons we have learned? But before that, please, I, I'm asking you, Vice Ambassador, to focus on the legality so that we can coordinate the conversation. Please go ahead. Uh, I think over the years, we've exhausted a lot on the legality of what happened to us. So we can progress by moving ahead and showing where we are. We were talking about the, something they call the African Union. The African Union, in terms of this type of uh, wars, is totally toothless. They are toothless. They are dishonest. And this is what happened to Ambazonia as far as the African Union is concerned. All of us can remember something they call Communication 266. Communication 266 that was fired in 2003 address all these legal issues and communication 266 there is not binding until the heads of states endorse it it was fired in 2003 the judgment came out in 2009 and what happened the ambassadors were in uh, banjo said look all these things are illegal this Unification thing was wrong. Communication 266 in paragraph 192 is 25 page document. It said, yes, Amazonians are a people entitled to self determination. Then they ask, Yaoundé, what do you say? Yeah, they say, yeah, we agree. They are people entitled to self determination. But they can only claim self determination if it is shown that in the case of massive human rights violations. That's in writing in that document. And what happened? The African Union they raised this issue in 1961. And then they came out with a very legal uh, opinion. They said, amongst other things, that yeah, the, the African Union, which created the African Commission on Human People's Rights, was created to keep African countries together. So to give independence to uh, Ambazonia would tantamount to breaking down the African Union. What a fallacy is that? And they, they did that and went ahead and said, well, you see, but we know that people have problems. You can come to us, we'll help you put it in order. This thing was signed, was endorsed by the heads of states. Um, signed by the court it became law so what is legal there this is total manifestly illegal if that was the case in 2003 to 2009 that yaoundé said in courts the ambassadors are entitled as the people to say determination if they show that there's massive human rights abuses that was 2009 today we're 2020 at the time, they didn't even have this magnitude of human rights abuses on Amazonians. I think not even surpassed that mark that the African Union put it down in black and white, and the heads of states endorsed it. 
And so you find that these people, uh, they, they, they have been manipulating us for long. We have talked about Fuman for a long time. And this is something that most people don't know. When they went to Fuman, we have discussed Fuman. That was in July, 1961. After Fuman, there was another conference in Boya, August, where Fancha and his team was there, Ahijo was there alone. I think so. There was a British technical advisor. In that discussion, ANJU are made to rest in peace, rest an issue. Say now you are imposing this, you are bringing this federal constitution to us. For it to be binding on us, it has to be passed in the West Cameroon House of Assembly. For it to be binding. Because there are things that you have agreed that we don't agree on. Well, what did the British technical advisor say? <laughs> I'm compared to say people who are here. You see, well, no, no, don't worry about that. Because everything that the Francophones agree, which is the majority, they will bind you. <laughs> How can the majority bind you in the Federation? And see, this is the British technical advisor sent to advise Ambazonians or the West Cameroon, Southern Cameroon delegation who he talks with a huge. Telling us that, no, we don't need to ratify the thing there. Anything that the Francophones agree, would you bind us? I don't know his foundation of law. <laughs> I don't know what was, was the foundation of the of the of the union. So you find that all these are machinations that are terrible. We have, we have emphasized too many. There are just many, one too many, for us to do this. Uh, Somali land, I'm sure, they have never suffered the degree of torture in the hands of Somali uh, Somalia that ambassadors have suffered in the house of Yawundi. They have killed us. They have drunk our blood. They have fed on our flesh. If this is not enough, what else will be enough for people to go away? What else will be enough for a woman to divorce the husband? As I said in my initial statement, the first marriage, the first marriage is remains the first marriage. Even if you, if you, even if you, Break down woman and a dozen children with her, will still remain a first marriage. You can quit at any time. And so, based on what is going on in Somaliland and Somalia and Ethiopia, we are on a good footing. We will take time, of course. The only remedy that Somalia can have with its allies is to refuse Somaliland membership of the United Nations General Assembly. That's irrelevant. That's totally irrelevant. Because Article 4 of the Charter says that countries that want to join can join. Not every country in the world is involved in the United Nations Organization. You can join, provided that your application is approved by the Security Council without a veto and endorsed by the General Assembly. So we don't need all that. Kosovo of the 1990s is an independent country without being a member of the United Nations. Because the independence, thanks to the late Madeline Albright under Clinton, who came from there, bombarded the people there, and they got the independence. The question of uh, Somaliland becoming part of the United Nations organizations, part of the African Union organization, is unavoidable. Like it or not, there's nothing you can do. Politically, there's nothing you can do. Amazing. I'm actually a bit of progress right now with the conversation. Unfortunately, we have uh, um, SOS Zama who is involved with uh, the military wing of the government of Amazonia. Interestingly, perhaps you want to talk about the significance of us restoring uh, the government that was hijacked, dissolved, and usurped. And also, and also creating a state army. It is worthy to mention that we had a mobile wing police, but prior to this time, we never had a state army. And right, just uh, two days ago, the president officially published the seal of the Amazonia State Army. We are looking at a nation that for 30, for three long decades has been trying to seek recognition but the good side of their story is that they've had the chance to govern themselves for 30 decades 
though they they are still being despised by a chunk of the community of nations what do you think and what should we do to not just be defending ourselves from intrusion and belligerent occupation but so that we can actually own territory that we will met our governance as we seek to be recognized talk to us um, um, hello um thank you uh comrade Pali. uh the idea that uh, uh we're gonna take the same route 30 something years that uh, somaliland has taken um might not necessarily be true uh we are distinct and the only way to force La Republic is to either make them bankrupt, like most countries that have fought extended war have been bankrupt. La Republic is not uh, going to be spared by that. Um, we are going to drag them down and we're going to keep fighting as usual. But as I said, we are not going to be looking for a 30 year war with La Republic uh, because La Republic doesn't have the resources to be able to sustain a 30 year war. Uh, we, as a people, the idea that we will continue staying under the auspices of that is not is not fundamental. What we are going to do is basically to maintain the territory that we have and clear out all the remnants of La Republic structures within Amazonia. And we are we are carefully and slowly getting to that point because there are, there are areas that we do not have a single entity or uh, CPDA members in those areas in in in, 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 in Amazonia. And we're going to continue that process of. Uh, um, uh, getting rid of the structures uh, implanted uh, by La Republic, uh, the, um, especially the militancy of their, that their, uh, party, uh, CPDM, uh, that has to be eradicated because we have to go back to the fundamentals of our own community. Uh, fundamentals in the sense that we have to be doing what is, com what is good for our own communities like we used to do before. Um, these things, uh, La Republic has implanted and seized the chiefs from their communities and made them hostages in Yaoundé. Uh, we will have to relook at that and look into the fact that any chief who is not in their kingdom should be ready to be taken out of that uh, role. They will not be a chief and we have to select uh, um, the, the kingmakers on those different uh, localities will have to be met to select a king to replace the one that has abdicated because they would run, not because they were pushed out by their people, but it was out of their own volition. We have to look on, this, on the second side, on the lighter side that, yes, our people have sustained this war, our people will continue to sustain this war until we reach Boya. We will never give up. This is a fight that we've had uh, for so many years. Uh, there are citizens who have died for it. The Mami Apia and all the kids in um, Kwa Kwa, Kendem, and in, um, um, in um, and Kambe, and all or not. We are, that's why we are fighting this war. That's why we are staying in the fight, because we have to avenge all these people who've gone ahead of us. For no reason, they were slaughtered. And, and those, those are the things that we are dealing with. But on the other hand, uh, uh, Somalia and Somaliland or were all independent states that and went and went into a union that never uh, went into fruition because between uh, 1960, I think July 7, 60, uh, there was a ratification of um, the union treaty in um, Somaliland, but it was only promulgated in the Somalia Somalian um, assembly. It was it never came to a vote. So, and when they decided to make an implementation that included Somaliland, uh, they did. Um, um, a, they had it a retrospectively, uh, that's in 1961, which is an, an illegal illegality. The, there's a lot of similarities and few things that are related to Amazonia with the Somaliland, but we as a people, we are we are standing that ground and like Barista Mbesa, um, Barista Anso and Barista Ghana have, have, have said it succinctly, we are going to get to Boya. La Republic is not expecting it sooner. They said when you see things in your rear view mirror, they look they look further than they seem. So we will reach Boya, uh, whether La Republic likes it or not. We will make Boya the capital, and Amazonia is going to become a state. And and that's uh, how fast that happens. It depends a lot on our own willingness to precipitate that uh, arrival to Boya. Thank you. Yeah, in that in that regard. Uh, uh, um... So I have one 
more and probably a last question for you not now let me get back to diplomacy because this is all in the arena of diplomacy and i have tacticians with me on this panel barrister then i'm back with you no ambazonia not even you wants to think that we will be getting one of our first endorsement recognition agreement 30 or three decades later you know you work with the team in diplomacy and whatever the government is putting in place to lobby to to create partnership to force those who voted for independence to think that it is time for them to start making categoric statements in our favor what more is there to be done what do you think we can do as we focus as a nation this year to make sure that we can have people start recognizing us and probably giving some military assistance that will help us kick Cameroon quickly like uh, uh, SOS Zama is suggesting. Please talk to us. This is where every Ambazonia is waiting to see that your prophecy that will probably work. Talk to us, please. All right. So, uh, Comrade Paddy and our very, very uh, esteemed panel, uh, let me let me i'm going to make my bold pr prophecy here in less than five years ambazonia will be free let me make that prophecy again in less than five years ambazonia will be free uh, in terms of being able to leverage the diplomatic community by the way you said i was part of the, the panel that created that I, I wasn't. So there are other people who were selected by the leadership of the of, 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 of our interim government to do that. And my take is that oh, I, I should say they should be doing an, a good job because the Ambazonians, our restoration fighters and the people on the home front who are defending our te territory, as Sylvester, uh, SOS Sylvester Zama is stating, uh, deserve a corresponding robust diplomatic effort we have everything with us that we need to make that diplomatic breakthrough uh, i remember in 2019 some good and valiant patriots of us in in chicago uh, 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 sought the, the the audience of of united states senator dick durban i was invited to do the lead presentation to Senator Dick Devon about our plight. Uh, we had other valiant Ambazonians like Valentine Binglo in the Illinois area. It took us 20 minutes, 20 minutes to convince Senator Dick Devon to take our case to the United States Senate floor. And Senator Dick Devon kept his word and took our case to the United Senate, Senate floor. And that brief little meeting led to the United States government restricting arms sales to Cameroon because the history is clear, the facts are clear, the legality is clear, the precedent is clear. So we just need to make those robot efforts to take our strife across the line. And we have to focus on that. And to the leaders of the interim government, especially in the diplomatic circle, we have to work with the United uh, Nations General Assembly. We should not wait. This is this is 2024. We need to know what we are doing as the UN General Assembly is planning to meet in September. We have not done substantially what we need to do in the previous years. We need to do that. People should either do their job or resign from their positions. I'm going to be very blatant. This is 2024. Our case is very clear. People who are in certain positions, they should either do their jobs or resign. Uh, we, as when we were in act, we had a lot of meetings. Even we had meetings with the representatives of Somaliland. One of the things, and I'm going to be speaking to Ambazonians in general with this point I am making. One of the things we learned about Somaliland was that they had constituted themselves and harmonized all their groups to be able to govern Somaliland. And so, as uh, one of our speakers spoke, as uh, ba Barrister John Fru said, 
They have their own currency. They have their own army. They have a unified government. They don't have divisions as we in Ambazonia do. Some of us in Ambazonia are our own worst enemies. When this struggle started, I want to go back a little bit to history. 2015, 2016, 2017, we had the conclaves in Nigeria. In the first conclave, that is when the offshoots or the green shoots of the interim government emerged. We had a constitution coming out of the first conclave. When some people who thought they were going to be leaders did not become leaders, they decided to splinter and go form their own different groups. Whether it's, I'm going to call uh, 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 groups here specifically, whether it's ADF, whether it's SCOPE, they deviated from the main focus. And that is why I've always been steadfast behind the interim government, because it came out of the fourth conclave in Nigeria. Now, when you look at what Somaliland did, they unified their people, they unified their leadership, and they speak with one voice. That is why countries like the Republic of Taiwan recognizes them. That is why they are represented in, in, in the uh, unrepresented PP peoples in the United Nations General Assembly. That is why Somalia is coming now to strike a deal with them to have a 20 kilometer or 12 mile access to the port de facto recognizing them as an independent entity with the right to strike their own deals. So with regards to the diplomatic uh, breakthroughs we need to make, the interim government needs to redouble its efforts. I'm going to tell you, personally, I'm not satisfied with the strikes that we have made. There are many low-hanging fruits that we can harvest. We need to do better. But I just want to say something again to add to people squabbling about their recognition, non-recognition, non and all of that, especially African countries. African countries know the truth. African countries need to step forward and do more to help liberate Ambazonia. Two weeks ago, I read something that left my mind aghast. Cyril Ramaphosa in South Africa. South Africa is leading the way to sue Israel in the international court because of genocide that is happening in, the, 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 in Palestine. Israel is leading the world to sue, I mean, South Africa is leading the world to sue Israel. 22,000 Palestinians have died. That is a gross injustice to the Palestinian people, partly prompted by their leaders in Hamas, I'm going to have to say that. However, South Africa is very mindful that over 50,000 Ambazonians have died. What has South Africa done to bring the case of Ambazonia to the AU? What has, has South Africa I was done? Just, to... I was just about saying that. I, I, I was just about saying that's, uh, that's misplaced priority. You have not cleaned the, the speck in your eye, and you're looking at Israel, and a lot is happening in Africa, and we're expecting South Africa to be leader. Please continue. It's unfortunate. Correct, correct. What has South Africa done in the AU to uh, 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 bring the case of Ambazonia? Is it that we haven't spoken to them? As part of AP, the Ambazonian coalition team, we met with high-level cadres of the African National Congress. What did yes. they do that they are rushing now to put the case of Palestine uh, in, 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 in the UN courts? So yes, we have to push the right buttons to act on the situation of Ambazonia. People who have, I'm going to repeat this one more time, People who have diplomatic positions with the interim government need to be doing their jobs and need to show results of what they are doing. Because if you make the right efforts, and it has been demonstrated by things that we have done, if you yeah. make the right effort, you will get the right uh, results. But I'm going to reiterate my, my, my prophecy that in less than five years, Ambazonia is going to be free. And Ambazonia is going to fully regain its sovereignty. Thank you. Uh, Barista Ghana, it, it couldn't have been said any better. And this brings us to a, a conversation which I wouldn't even want us to get into this evening. The, the intricacies, diplomacies, and the people to partner with. Uh, I, I think we had um, the Department of Women's Services here that came and gave a blueprint of what they hope to do this year. And we're hoping that every other department will either have their, the leaders and SOS of their department coming to talk to Amazonians what they are doing and what they're able to do, 
from the national treasury to education and or send a representative we're also hoping that Amazonians will be accountable when they take responsibility to do or you resign if you are unable to take responsibility and it brings me to something critical the friends we make the choices we make um the video we watched earlier on is telling us that African nations may be shying away from setting the wrong precedents, which we have argued that is not a matter about precedence, it's a matter about legality. Do you think that in our diplomatic efforts, I'm coming to you, Barrister Fru and Barrister Mbessa, you could react to this. In our diplomatic efforts, we could look towards these nations who are choosing to break the status quo. I talk about Mali, I'm talking about um, uh, Guinea, Conakry, we're talking about Niger. They are break, they're shifting the grounds when it comes to how they want to make their future. And we're also told that Russia is backing Ethiopia's agreement with Somali. So should we just stick with the West like we're doing, or we want to we want to break some of these laws? and navigate our way to total freedom. Barista Fru, I'll begin with you. Yes. Uh, let me let me lay, let me help Barista Ghana to, to tell him to tell him that to tell Fru, the correction please. Uh, SOS is no more interim government, is a government. I think Barista yes. Barista Ghana Yes, yes, I was Yes, I was going to say that, but but I wanted to lay his fears about diplomacy. Yes. Diplomacy is a quiet endeavor. The heavy lifting is being done by this government. That the the uh, 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 those of us who are serving the government or who are not who are not in diplomacy are not privy to. I want to tell you that it is not for nothing that our head of state, our president, met with the congressional staffers for more than 21 times in 2023. I want to tell you that diplomacy is, the, those who are handling diplomacy are working day and night without necessarily saying anything because it is it is it is so delicate that we cannot bring it to the public without concrete results. But as a Ghana, you would you should know that there is diplomacy that is working right to the United Nations, right to other African countries, and to this particularly to the United States where we are stationed right now. And in Europe, a lot of things are happening. I am, I am, I am not going to stick to your predictions of five years. <laughs> I will reduce it because I don't know whether I'll be there in five years. I want to say that 2024, latest 2025, we should all be in Boya. <laughs> The heavy lifting is being done uh, and is quiet, and uh, I will not. I will not pretend to divulge anything that is being done. But Dr. Mr. Ghana, rest assured that diplomacy is working day and night. In the case of South Africa, South Africa has a special relation with La Republic of Cameroon. Before you, uh, I mean, by, by the rest of the so before you continue, I just want to be happy that. You reaffirmed my time frame, though you gave a more optimistic time frame, but you reaffirmed it. I just want to note that. Thank, thank, thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> uh, La Republic and, and South Africa have diplomatic relations at a very high level, and uh, it will be very difficult for South Africa to betray La Republic du Cameroon. And most African countries shy away from saving, from, from rescuing each other, but they will run to rescue foreign countries. If you look at what La Republic is doing, if you look at what La Republic is doing, when a disaster takes place somewhere else in the world, you see them, they are the first to issue communiques. But when, but, but when 
when when landslide kills his own people, you don't hear it. When uh, uh, they kill our people, when they, they burn our villages, you don't hear the president, the president of the so-called La Republic of Cameroon say something. I'm saying that Africans, Africans are an enemies to themselves. Look at the way the, the, the African Union today is working. We thank God for, our, for, for OAU because thanks to OAU we have the uh, 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 paragraph, I mean Article 4B of the, of the Constitutive Act of the African mm -hmm. Union, which clearly states that the boundaries, boundaries of each country are frozen as of independence. That is what has killed La Republic. La Republic's boundaries and, and the Southern Cameroon boundaries are well known. And the, that of La Republic was frozen in 1960. And of course, 1961, our own two were frozen as La Republic, La Republic's own was frozen in 1960. Therefore, they don't have any territorial integrity to fight for in the Southern Cameroon. Now, having said that, I want all of us to know that diplomacy, diplomacy for 2023, going into 2024, has been very active and very aggressive. You don't know how far we have gone with Brazil. <sighs> But it is well known that we are working right up to Brazil. Brazil is a, is a country in it's a country that you have to you have to reckon with. It's a country in the third world or the developing world or emerging economies that we have to deal with. Diplomacy is in Africa is unknown, but we are working in Africa. I, I, I don't I, I don't want I don't I think that even if you invite somebody who is in the diplomatic uh, 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 department of this government, it will not give you any answers, any positive answers that are not existing. But to say that diplomacy has not moved, and that we should be, we should let let people resign. No, that is not the answer. The answer is the answer is. The answer is diplomacy is at its peak. We are waiting for ABC. We are waiting for ABC to organize another press conference for the president to speak to the world. Yeah, that is already in but, the making. But, but through the, the question or the concern at this juncture is that the work that has been done, and we can still increase and take advantages because the question here was how do we fast forward we we cannot also sit on our lorries and be so contented with whatever we would have done perhaps if we do more consultation and be more realistic vis-a-vis -vis the results we have we may see the need to add add some pressure and i want uh, to relate this question that you did not necessarily answer to my ambassador as we make progress. By Stambesa, here is it. We have seen countries in Africa take their responsibilities and breaking the rules, not necessarily following the, the current war order. And Russia is assisting a lot of these parties. I'm happy in the month of October, we had an interview. The people News had an interview with President Sarko. President Sarko said something I never forget. Our friends of today, might not necessarily be our friends. Starting route to 501 East Mount Hope Avenue. Please, please gentlemen, you want to mute your phone. Head north on Huddleston. With this conversation, mute your phones, please. Our, our friends of today might not be our friends of tomorrow. Our, our interest as Ambazonians is primordial. Do you think as we try to seek from Africa, we should, as a people, Focus more nations that have proven to be more pan Africanist. I'm talking about Guinea Conakry, I'm talking about Niger, I'm talking about Mali, I'm talking about these states that are literally kicking out France, who is our number one enemy. Should we, uh, should you, as an advisor to this government, be looking out 
on ways that could help the government focus and be more strategic in their diplomatic approach towards this angle. Please talk to us, Barista Mbesa. You may also want to come closer to the camera for Ambazonia to see you. You want to fix it yourself, please. Thank you. Uh, I, I think in diplomacy, as far as we're concerned, no door is closed. No door is closed. But you must remember that diplomacy is not revolutionary. It is progressive, but it must be aggressive. And to be progressive and aggressive, we must know the fine prints of what you want. What the other, what the, the other parties are saying about your plight. As Balasagana says, the bulk of our failures, if they are failures, have been orchestrated by our own ambassadors. Right now, what the United Nations understands, what the American that you met, senators and so on understand, and any other country in the world, is that there's some problems in Cameroon. Call it anything, there are problems there. And they have called for the parties to come together and address the root causes of the problem. If they have not come together to do that, it is not because of this government, it is because of our own brothers and sisters who try to circumvent who missed the best opportunity they had and sitting that and sit thought that they were still relevant. No. You see, if for example, all Amazonians groups, whatever they belong to, had understood this language and falling behind the Swiss led initiative, we will not be where we are. But they got distracted with something they call CDN, Canada 1, Canada 2, Canada 3. These are all Ambazonians. And so we ask ourselves, all these people purported to go and sit down and have a different vision of passing through Canada. What have they achieved in the past two years, past three years? It's zero. And these people claim to know so much. I can quote the bad name. You see, people like Mr. Mbak Akuro, whom I think doesn't know many things about diplomacy, but he claims to know so much. He's one of the people who fought, I call him privately, he fought to destroy the Swiss Net Initiative. For what? I don't know. But publicly, for Canada pretox. What did Canada pretox produce? Zero. So if all our efforts were geared towards a common goal. If we were to go back, for example, to the US senators or congressmen that you met before, I say, well, this has been going on for five years. You pass this resolution asking us to go and sit down at the direct course of the problem. And you just refused. You just refused because you refused to come. That will give an added impetus. I did not agree with Mr. So that South Africa has a privileged relation. No. Wherever you will go, or most of the countries that you go to, already have embassies in Yaoundé. They have embassies in Yaoundé. America has, Britain has, China has. So that is a common thing. But you have to sell your own thing. All the law will give here, the text will give here, mean nothing until they are sitting opposite the table with us. And they will raise these issues and say, how did this happen? They refuse, if there is one, will say, but what? Give your own version. Apparently, they don't have nothing to say. But let us push for this. After Canada 3, the pre -talks, something has surfaced again called a secretariat. These are all Ambazonians asking people to contribute money for something they call secretariat. And then these people claim also to be fighting for independence. To be brought to them by secretariat? I think that's total madness. After all this, you find people like Chris Anu. In his last speech, whether it was to a nation or whoever, he mentioned referendum six times. But he never mentioned the fine prints of referendum. Come and give us a referendum to be supervised by the United Nations. Who should come and give you the, the referendum before the UN will supervise it? They have missed out on that. The United Nations is never going to come stand somewhere and begin to count votes at the polls. But since that says for the oh, they just give us a referendum, it becomes a distraction. If there must be a referendum, 
the referendum will come on the peace table. Where well, they will sit there and answer our questions. Mr. Andrew wants a referendum. Yes. Munzu wants a federation. Yes. But what happened to the 1961 so called federation? Where did it go to? These are, these are issues that Yaoundé will never answer. And that was avoid coming to the table without preconditions. These are the words used by the United Nations Secretary General. Without preconditions. These are the words used by the American State Department. These are the words used by the African Union. Go to the conference table without preconditions and address the root causes of the problem. Even if, but tomorrow we get independent as, as I can ask, I suppose, there will still be an American embassy in Yaoundé. Yeah. <laughs> there will still be a South African embassy in Yaoundé. Yeah. So they are already there. So thinking that they will not going to help us because no, no. And diplomatic relations are created for interest. I said this here. Why are we, we started with this thing with Somalia, Somaliland, which is breaking the ice by Ethiopia. Ethiopia has an interest to have access to the, to the Red Sea. That's just all. America has an interest. Yeah. To be sure that the people in Djibouti don't come out of uh, take uh, the CIA. So they have all this coded interest everywhere. Our diplomats must be able to identify these things, coded in language that we and me don't understand. When they go behind the screen to talk to the people, as I've said, uh, diplomacy is not revolutionary, but it is aggressive. We point these things to them. What they are afraid to do, they are afraid to respect anything said by the United Nations, by the yeah. Americans, even the British. And so that's how you gain some support. I, think I, like, I like what you've just said there, um, Barista Mbesa, and I think I'll, I'll come back to you. You said something which is what I want everybody to take. Those who are watching us on Facebook and on YouTube, you, you can continue to share. You're doing a good job already. You're amazing. I would say that that is a part of of your of your fight, the media fight we are doing. But Stambesa says diplomacy is not revolutionary, but it is aggressive, which is uh, which is the point. Um, uh, Barista Ghana was trying to enforce in, in another language. So I'm coming to you, uh, Sylvester Zama. But before that, I really always don't like even to cite Chris Anu because I tell people all the time it's not an insult. Chris Anu unscripted is clueless. Just go crystallize everything he says. I'm happy you analyzed his speech. I didn't have time to watch it because uh, uh, the But if you let me, if, if let me learn, I, I was landing, I was trying to land on a point, which is crucial. Yeah. So we have gotten charlatans who purport to represent Amazonia. One of which is assistant Sama Thomas. When the occasion arose for him to be useful in helping file a case in Belgium, he destroyed it, knowingly or unknowingly. I don't think he even knew it. He, had no, he doesn't have that mental capacity. But these are the people you find on TV every day singing the choir of the referendum. That he has no clue about it. Again, it's not because of Sama or others who look dull. When this thing started in 2016, I don't know, I missed that document. Dr. Munzu, who is a federalist, he wrote a letter to the presidency in Yaoundé. What did he say in the letter? He said, look, just buy this federation, call me and come and negotiate with you before the radicals take over the place. This is Munzu, a PhD holder with United Nations credentials on his name. He was just so dishonest before the radicals take over the place, negotiate with me and give, <laughs> and give us the federation. These are our own brothers and sisters. If we were to go for negotiations and then the name, uh, the Muslims, to be in the panel, wouldn't you say that these are the people that we need to have there? But they fail us. Yeah. Who are those who sponsored the Canada pre -talks? They are professors. Not because they thought that the Canada pre -talks would be anything, no. The whole goal was to destroy the mind they did not like. To destroy yeah. something that was bad, which was useful by Sarko, the man they did not like. No, that's not how it works. That's and there are those, I'm sorry if I have to cut you, there are also those who believe that 
uh, they did so because they are enablers of the colonial administration. I'm coming to you now, SOS Amad. This will probably be your last comment because you may be leaving. They are uh, Amazonians. We, we've all agreed on this panel tonight that we need to hold the ground game strong and even stronger. There are those who feel that even the citizens of East Cameroon or La Republic of Cameroon are not committed to obliging their government because there is really no war. We understand that economic sabotage is affecting them greatly. Um, is there anything we will do to escalate the ground game and probably inflict more pain, not just on our, not just allowing the Republic of Cameroon to inflict pain on our people, but looking for a way to make sure that the war is felt in Yaoundé and Douala. Oh, in La Republic of Cameroon. That should be your concluding statement. And I'll get back with the barristers for us to continue our diplomatic talk. You're muted. No, no sir. Muted. You muted yourself, I'm sure, because of the background music. Yeah. Okay. I think the citizens of Amazonia have to understand that we are at war. They, they feel the war, uh, they've not been 100% committed to this war because uh, sometimes you have to sacrifice today for a better tomorrow. Uh, sometimes people said oh, they've sacrificed too much. Uh, you don't sacrifice too much when you still haven't arrived at your goal. Or oh, the people have to make it understood that even if we maintain what we have to maintain, we sub, stop supplying food to the East, stop surprising what, what we have to do to East Cameroon, to La Republic. La Republic is going to crumble. There are not many farmers in that part of the country. They have they have some in Kalimanduka, all these rural parts of uh, the center and the south, that they don't have any roads to provide, to take this food to the center, to, the, uh, to Yaoundé. So the only possible places are from the southern zone, uh, uh, from the northern zone to Bafusam and then transiting to Douala and Yaoundé. And that's that's giving them a little bit of uh, buffer for the infl inflation. I hear a bag of um, rice or igusi right now in, in Yaoundé is 18,000. Uh, so it's, it's life is not getting any cheaper for them because of this war. Uh, not only that, a lot of our farmers are not producing what they should produce because of the war, because they are afraid to go into the to their farms because uh, La Republic and their proxy groups are, are killing farmers all over the country. <clears throat> but the mere fact is uh, the non non citizens of um, um, Amazonia uh, who are not committed to this war is another problem. Uh, we will either have to tacitly get uh, 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 a promise from them to be able to participate in this war to be able to do what they must do to bring uh, a ground and our public to Cameroon. Uh, the French people are not uh, French-speaking Cameroonians are not uh, uh, are not up to par. They have been uh, sheepishly led. Uh, they get uh, uh, command that comes from above, and everybody follows and lies in line. Um, we have to educate uh, our, the French-speaking people. For us to be able to ferment enough trouble for them, they should be able to understand the the idea of liberty, the idea of questioning authorities. And we haven't really done that a portion of it. We've had we've uh, had this idea. Okay, do we have a French program that will cover them or not? But at the end of the day, we have to do what we must do. We have to restrict the feeding of the enemy. We have to restrict them to getting any any currency they can get out of Amazonia or anything that's related to this fight for them for their own benefit. As long as we can do that, La Republic is gonna go to the ground. Every empire that has fought a war. The English Empire failed not because they, they were poor managers, but because they, they were bankrupt. Um, that's what all happened. The, the, the Russian Empire, it was based on bankruptcy. And La Republic is a small country with very minimal GDP uh, in a couple of hundred million, billion, but they are not going to fight this war. They already internal debt is in the billions and billions of dollars. And once these people reach a point of no return, uh, that's when this system is going to fall. And, and and I see that coming pretty soon. It's not a long time from now. Um, the, the, it's a tender box and it just needs a, a spark to be lit. And that thing might come from us. It might come from within. But I think there's nothing bad from us uh, uh, catalyzing and, and propelling them to that point where it creates a whole 
implosion in the East, and then we may have it easier on our side to organize ourselves and do what we have to do. Uh, but uh, until then, Ambazonians have to understand that we are fighting this war to to save two people: the French speakers and the uh, and, and 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 the people of Ambazonia. And I think it's it's a, a laudable effort that our people have to take. Otherwise, we 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 will have to, we 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 will use one tree to push down two trees. Thank you. That 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 was quite amazing and and, and very instrumental there. I think uh, that will be our au revoir for you for tonight's discussion. I I want to thank you for creating time amidst your your very busy schedule to come and have this educative program with Amazonians. And you mentioned something talking about um, the colonial administration and whatever they're doing. You have two presidents making an end of year address and one on, uh, in the Cameroons, the uh, president of Amazonia. Uh, Paddy, Paddy, before yes. you go there, before you go there, I want just to make one little statement on diplomacy before we close the topic for diplomacy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when I was defending Ayuktabe in Yaoundé, I had an opportunity to meet with a diplomat in the South African embassy. I, he came to court once and I took his card and I called him and I went to meet him in his office. And he told me the statement I've just made here that South Africa has a special relationship with, with La Republic of Cameroon. South Africa has invested a lot. The telecommunication network, they have MTN, is a South African company that is doing good business in Cameroon, and they will not risk that for anything. And that they cannot give me any protection. Because you people, you would have understood that I would I was not I was looking for my own protection while I go to the networks in Cameroon. That's why I made that statement. Nigeria, which voted for our independence, is the is our next door neighbor. We have not been able to convince Nigeria to do anything for us. All the judgments, all the judgments that have been obtained in the in the High Court in Nigeria in the Abuja High Court in Nigeria, and so on and so forth, Nigeria has refused to implement any. But that is Nigeria, which is a giant in black Africa. They have not, they, they, they don't, that's why I made a statement that, I wasn't only talking about South Africa, I made a statement that Africans are more inclined to think about others out of the continent and forget about those of us who are suffering on the continent. The, uh, Nigeria is a clear example. South Africa is another one. I want. I just wanted to make that clear. And that uh, inside of all that, this government is working in diplomatically to get to Nigeria and to get to South Africa. That is in the works. It is not something that we can sit here on television and talk about it. That's why I made a statement that diplomacy is quiet it is aggressive and quiet. Until you have results, you cannot announce them. Thank you. Amazing. Buddy, I don't know, we, buddy, I don't know, I don't know whether Sector Yama, I don't know where Sector Yama is gone. I have something to say yeah, before he gone. leaves. Okay. What I was trying to say, I hope you listen to this on the audio. What I was trying to say, you see, economic sabotage is absolutely important. But sometimes we will miss the real goal, we fail. For example, a woman trying to sell a bunch of plantain in the corner market. She just wants to survive. A woman trying to sell a bag of copayams in Monia. She just wants to get money to pay her child's school fees. I don't think we can do better economically to destroy Yaoundé. There are so many. That we don't even need 100 um, uh, ambassadors to go and do it. We can agree, I don't know how many people would doubt me here, that the whole when you they say they are down on their knees, they are economically. Seventy percent of the money that fits the Yaoundé is not from the cocoa your mother or your sister says. No, it is from the resources, not fresh foreign currency. It is from palm oil. 
it is from CDC. It is from Sonara. If our boys, just five, can do everything to stop the production of rubber in Fako, that's a milestone. As of now, we know that Sonora produces nothing. They produce nothing. So they are on their knees because this is the gender fish foreign currency, which they don't have. So I don't know whether it is a distribution of business or jobs. If we can say, okay, the southern the Atlantic zone, let us specialize in this economic sabotage and the highest scale. I say, okay, five boys. If you attack a robot tapper in Mondone or in uh, my, my 14 there, once he's not going to go back to that place anymore. And the rubber trees will grow wild. If you attack uh, a plantation worker in Pamo, two, three times, you're not going to go there anymore. That plantation will fall. And so on and so forth. So if we can do this strategically, it will pay us more because, yes, again, the money that feeds the war is not the cocoa that your, <laughs> your mother says or the beans. That's the oil. That's the thing that they mortgage to take loans from the World Bank, to take loans from the Chinese banks. They don't mortgage Kukuyams. They don't, don't mortgage cassava. Though it is important to do it. There's an aspect which I believe uh, there's been a long debate on this issue for quite a long time. And this aspect has to do with the economic activity within French Cameroons being grounded. Um, we, we're still talking on the peripheries. Economic sabotage is important. You're now classifying economic sab sabotage. But if we start thinking about economic activity in the com in their commercial capital, as because it's a war, as our strategic approach to ground it, because we have grounded economic activity in our country, in Bamenda, in many different ways, that may yeah. also be... It's not for me to bring, it's not for us to mitigate that year now. But I think when we talk, the government has to think and also think out of the box. And it leads me to the last phase of our conversation today evening. It is the last but not the least. And it has to do with the two cameras. And you have the two heads of space addressing their nations with very elaborate speeches. We just saw an excerpt of President Sarko's speech where he revived his people, gave them more hope, edifies his public. And during which address, President Sarko calls on the Amazonians <coughs> to stay focused. He didn't end there. President Sarko again would tell Amazonians that under his leadership, He's going to create a platform <coughs> that will be more collaborative. The government will create a, a, an environment, or do you want to call it a ground where every Amazonian will be able to come and have a conversation? Because at the end of the day, Amazonians will need to figure out a way of working to achieve their common goal. This was President Sacco actually talking and talking elaborately. And before we even get to where we have to start processing the questions and looking at that, I made a statement, which is a very strong statement, after processing President Bia's speech. And in that statement, we determined in the newsroom that President Bia lied. Yes, we're not just saying so because we're of ABC. <laughs> And we are trying to to just criticize but we had to process the details of his speech vis-a-vis -vis factual information so we had the colonial president paul Bia, of la republic to cameroon who spoke to his nation on the 31st as part of his traditional speech to the nation he said a lot of things, but in his this particular presentation, the aging Paul Bia used several untruths to justify the options taken by his colonial government. Here is some of the collection that we have. 
I quote, the consumption support measures implemented by the government have made it possible to control inflation and stabilize it at around 6.7%, declared dictator Paul Bia at the, at, at the part of a portion of his speech. An admission that contrasts with reality. According to the note on the evolution of final household consumption prices in the Cameroons in November 2023, published by the National Institute of Statistics, on average over the last 12 months, the inflation rate has risen at 7.5%. So I ask, why would be a lie? We'll find out that. An indicator that they rip that represents more than double the limit of 3% threshold set by CEMAC, that is Cameroon, Congo, Gabon, Chad, Central African Republic, and Equatorial Guinea, in its multilateral surveillance system. According to the document, inflation rates in the Cameroons remain above 7% in nine of the country's 10 regions, with the highest recorded in Betwa, that's the eastern part of La Republic de Cameroon, at 8.9%. Bamenda, the regional capital of the northern zone of Amazonia, has the lowest rate at 6.1%, but it is also above the community standard. Concerning the subsidy devoted to petroleum products in 2022, dictator Paul Bia gave figures out of sync with those of the colonial ministry of finance i quote last year that's what mr bia said he says last year the colonial government that is his government was required to slightly increase fuel prices at the pump thanks to this measure the subsidy of petroleum products which was more than 1000 billion francs cfa in 2022 was reduced to around 6 140 billion francs CFA in 2023, indicated the ruler of La Republic du Cameroon in his speech. A figure of 1,000 billion unknown to the services of the Colonial Ministry of Finance. So where did Mr. Bia and the Bellingas and the Owonas, I just heard Joseph Owona has passed, where did they get these figures from? According to the Director General of budget at the Colonial Ministry of Finance, Siri Endua Alo. The subsidy for fuel consumption, that is super diesel and kerosene, during the 2022 requested nearly 700 billion francs CFA. Now, Mr. Bia, head of state of La Republique du Cameroon, has multiplied untruths and other approximations to justify the option chosen. He quote, in quote again, you should know that to maintain pump prices at their current level, which is well below the practice in neighboring countries, the state must, at the cost of significant financial efforts, heavily subsidize imports of petroleum products. Bia says further, uh, he declares, a completely false statement outside the Central African Republic, where the price of gasoline has increased since January 3rd, 2023 to 1,300 francs CFA, that of oil to 1,150 francs CFA, and that of diesel to 1,450 francs CFA. Other countries in the sub-African region charge lower prices than those in the Cameroons. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, the price of a liter of gasoline at the pump increased from 595 francs CFA to 625 francs CFA at that of the price of close to 400, contrary to what we already know is happening in Gabon. Now, looking at these figures very closely, you're going to realize that Bia took his time in his end of year's address. There's a lot that he said. Took his time in his end of year address to lie. The question again is, why would President Bia choose to lie to the international community, to his own people? And no media house in the Cameroons 
will process the figures that were found in President Bia's uh, speech. You can find that only in ABC and Bat TV. And that's why I tell people all the time, this is not just the best revolutionary TV in sub-Saharan Africa. We are redefining the processing and production of news from Africa to the world. And we're calling on you to, to help us. Now, just to conclude on this, because there's a lot of lies that we can debunk in President Bia's speech. Just to conclude on this particular aspect so we can get some commentaries from our panelists. Now, in Gabon, before the drop in the prices of petroleum products announced by General Olengi, Olengema in his speech to the nation, the a liter or the liter of super was set at 605 francs CFA, that of diesel at 8, 585 francs and oil at 450 francs. In Equatorial Guinea, a liter of super was at 770 francs. In Chad, the price of a liter of gasoline at the pump has returned to what it used to be because it was reduced to 580 francs. So you see in the entire CEMAC, the prices of, of fuel and everything is escalating. It continues to, to rise, contrary to what BI is saying. And take note, his country is a pivotal nation within the CEMAC. Now, in spite of this, however, in the Cameroons, the li a liter of super increased to 730 francs CFA in 2023. And statistics or speculations have it that it could double this year. In fact, business people are concerned. A lot of people are concerned with all of this. And so Mr. Bia would say again in his speech, I quote, he will say the implementation of the various projects intended to meet the aspiration of our population faces a major constraint. That of the insufficiency of the necessary financial resources. So there is some admittance here, but again, with misguided information and statistics. I will bring you all the lawyers here to try to help us Amazonians who are seeking to understand why Mr. Bia will opt to look into the face of the international community and to lie his people, a vulnerable public. Most of them don't read. Fortunately, Amazonia has a generation of people who read. So why would Bia take upon himself to lie, to lie, and just to lie? I'll start with you, Barista Ghana. Uh, Comrade Paddy, uh, one of our speakers, I think that was Barista John Fu, so, said that one of the things that caused the Soviet Union to collapse was yeah. economics, you know. And uh, there's something in economics, if you study ru rudimentary economics, there's something called value added, you know. And then the counterpart of value added is value subtraction. and and, and in that concept of value added and value sub subtraction, I mean, when you manufacture a good or any commodity, you use constituent parts of resources, you know, uh, whatever resources, if you're, if you're a, a, a somebody manufacturing furniture, you use plank, you use nails, you use um, uh, labor, you know, you have to add all of the, all of the cost of all of these constituent parts to, to, to form the final price of that commodity that you sell. If you are a nation, uh, you you progress by the various constituent parts of, of, of your resources to sum up to certain things. But whenever the whole is always less than the sum of its con constituent parts, whenever the whole is always less than the sum of its constitu constituent parts, you're working not on value added, you're working on value sub, 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 subtraction. And sooner or later, that economic structure, whether it's a company, whether it's a nation, is going to collapse because it cannot sustain itself by operating through value subtraction. So yes, La Republic has been operating through value subtraction. And as uh, SOS Zama did state, uh, 
they don't have the resources to be able to sustain this war for a long time so they are the economy is bleeding at its knees and everything about yaounde is on its last knees you just said uh joseph owana passed away uh, the diaper wearing octogenarian in 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 a the 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 under the the the, the the most incompetent underachiever that any country could have as a leader, uh, B. Vondobia, is also on his last knees. He's, he's, uh, he, he's going to yield to nature, literally. So with that kind of an economic situation, with that kind of inability to transition its leadership structure from one phase to another, from one president to another, from one system to another. Cameroon is stuck. You know, one of the reasons why it's been very difficult for the French to usher Bia to the next phase in terms of leadership in their country, La Republique du Cameroon, is that people are more intelligent, people are more sophisticated. It's very difficult to find somebody who will continue with those same ways of operating, of value subtraction that Mr. Bia has been operating and so you are very right in talking about the prices in nigeria we're talking about dangote opening a refinery refining oil trying to take some steps to move the country forward in cameroon we're still toying around with prices and how to tax people left and right to sort of meet the shortfall ex 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 increasing taxes on the population to an exorbitant level that system is not going to be able to sustain itself. It is going to collapse. So, so economically, you're right. The sum is always should always be more than the uh, sum of its constituent parts in Cameroon. It is definitely less than the sum of its constituent parts. That system, sooner or later, is going to collapse. So that's my take on that economic aspect of it. Comrade Paddy, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Just uh, uh, we, we, I'm trying to look at some things at the background. <laughs> Barrister Flu, please. Yes. I know you can. Uh, La Republic du Cameroon is finished. And it and the beer's the beer speech was an attempt to convince not only its citizens, but the world that they are still standing listen he had no other choice but to lie he was trying to convince the world that his country is not failing and the world knows that la republic has been living from day to day on loans and they had these loans have come to an end that's why he himself admitted that there's no money in the treasury for the first time since 41, 41 years, they admitted that there was no money in the treasury. And his own way of getting money in the treasury is to reform, is to reduce the, 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 the expenses of government by, by catching those who have been bailing, embezzling money, the catching will be accelerated by reducing the way the government functions and he went ahead to convince the world that the war he started in the southern cameroons has not affected the well-being of la republic cameroon that is the crux of the matter and he lied again to say that they they have they have they have brought down the, the the crisis in the northwest and southwest. What is remaining is only pockets of resistance, and that many people have many of the fighters have been going to the DDR center and turning in their arms, and that any terrorists calling us terrorists, eh? any terrorists that is still fighting will be dealt with uh, very severely by the forces of law and order and call on the population to continue to cooperate with these forces of law and order 
as if the population of um, of southern Cameroon was ever cooperating with La Republic forces of occupation. Those are all lies to give to the world that Cameroon is standing when Cameroon is actually on its knees. Look, the southern Cameroon's economic sabotage has contributed to the, the present situation in La Republic of Cameroon. Just look at the social media and look at the videos. There is refuge everywhere in Yaoundé. There is sewage flowing in the streets of Yaoundé. There is sewage flowing in the streets of Douala and refuse all over Douala and other cities in, 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 in La Republic of Cameroon. I, I venture to say that the cities of Ambazonia are 10 times cleaner than the cities than even Yaoundé in La Republic of Cameroon. And, and that this, he had no choice but to lie. And he to, to crown it all, for the first time, he talked about picking up refuge in the cities. A head of state addressing the nation and talking about picking up refuge in the cities. What happened? That refuge were not being picked. Did he not? They, it is because they lack the resources. It is because they are not longer pay, pay, paying the companies that were doing the work. They are no longer uh, 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 paying money that they owe to the international, to the to the to the World Bank and to the World Bank and the IMF and other 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 other, other lenders like China. The old China, the Cameroon debt stands at. 12,000 12, billion, uh, billion um, milliard francs CFA. And China, they are owing China 61% of that. Now, China is no longer giving money. The World Bank is no longer giving money. IMF is not giving money. But he, tells, he says he lied about inflation because if he says inflation is high, he, the, he, he, he cannot tie with the, with, the, with the fact that there's no money in their treasury. Having said that, La Republic will not spend one penny again in fighting Ambazonia. When they have small money for petrol, they send some some uh, uh, some some scouts that have been trained for six months. They enter Bui and they are wiped out, or they enter Ngokuchuja and they are wiped out. They are no longer fighting. That's why you see other 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 counties in in, in Ambazonia are not fighting because they have nobody to fight. Because the Republic has tacitly withdrawn without saying so and claim that they have made peace to return to the southern Cameroon and that only pockets of resistance re remain. You see, it is a, this is, this is, he lied about constructing 700, uh, uh, 700 kil kilometers of third roads in the, in the, in the, in the Republic. And all their media has shown, the media that I listened to, uh, Kinox and others have shown that it's a lie. He did not even one, not even, not even 100 kilometers of any road has been, has been constructed anywhere in the Republic of Cameroon. So this man and the way he was talking, you will know that he's a dying man. He's not yet dead, but I don't know whether a, a, a politician who is, who is like that can still function as a politician. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. And, and to cut and to cut it all, that speech was taped. I don't know, uh, you know, with this world of uh, of uh, you can easily tape his speech, but there are those who believe that it was even an AI <laughs> because AI can mimic your voice. Exactly, AI, you see, that's what I was going to say. AI has done the work, and that's why you see him talking. Uh, <laughs> so let me come to you, Barista <laughs> before we get to the conclusion of the program but Mr. Mesa, in comparison with president Sarko's speech well i have made my analysis and my determination is why uh, president Sarko will be busy edifying his people telling them to stay united to stay focused and, and that we are going to make more achievements cognizant of the reality on the ground there is an ongoing war uh, and he needs the vigilance of every actor. Mr. Bia, on the other hand, is trying to, to paint what is black-white, the economy of his country that has crumbled 
he's trying to give himself some accolades of achievements in comparison again with president sarko's speech why do you think so why would he do that talk to us Mr. Beza. well let me answer the question he would do that because that helps him to stay in power as simple as that was he lying more than 50 percent he was lying and he lied that was not the first time that he lied but that's not how i look at it i take the speech from two different angles if he lies to the people of cameroon his people it is for them to say truth is true it is it don't do it there's nothing that me and you can do and that takes me to a clip i saw yesterday i don't know who put all that in there uh, from the nalova b who was saying that well let the people go out and demonstrate and the government will fall huh? if all the ambassadors went to the street to demonstrate probably i would not fall so that takes me to what he said about ambazonia he said the war is over on the pockets of resistance we should know it's a lie but you know, and then he follows it up with the palace of a renovated, uh, a renovated pal palace of somebody fun of what everything in in Kambay there. Well, is that what the ambassador are fighting to renovate the palace of a phone? Total destruction. That's not what we're fighting for. He follows that with the see some boot that standing on the road say they didn't wrote the wound. That is just calculated to be destruction. We know that. But the problem is our own brothers and sisters have learned to buy into those lies. If Phobia said anything, which he said, he was not addressing the ordinary Cameroonian in his country. He was addressing his group of licensed armed robbers who have robbed the treasury of the they have. But we cannot do anything about that. If the people can rise against him, so be it. And it brings me to what we said before. Economic sabotage by Ambazonians we put a final nail on them and probably as a government or as, as a republic. And let us focus on what we have. He's a perpetual liar. That's not the first time he lied. And so that is what he said. We don't need to compare him to President Sarko. President Sarko is talking to you and me. He's talking the issues of Ambazonia. And he addressed every single issue there. Where well, like you know, it was addressed. Probably is not talking to the only guy in the street, as Mr. So says. If you go on the Queen of see how the people verify that nonsense, he calls a speech. It's not a speech, it was concocted lies. But there's not so much you can do to lie. You can cheat the people who are lying, but you cannot cheat nature because you will die. So I guess the people there who include their licensed armed robbers of the treasury must looking for somewhere to hide. Because, like it or not, Pobier is on the exit road. Our problem is not that he's on the exit road. The, our problem is how do we benefit from his exit today evening or tomorrow morning? That's what we should strategize on. And so, that's it. I cannot, I don't think I would ever cre give credit to a certain man to call Mr. Pobier, who himself is a murderer. There's everything you can say about that system again what can you and me do we're here because it's killed us the people of the republic of cameroon have kept quiet this guy has drunk our blood they have eaten our flesh and they kept quiet and so as ambazonians let us do what we can do best to help end the occupation to help bring them down and what we can do best from their own mouth is to double hard on the economic sabotage until they have no way to borrow they have no way to steal then we should have learned the lesson that we are gone that's just all because there's nothing me you, you can do to bring down a dictator supported by 80 percent of, of his own population again as i saw nadu he said well you're going to demonstrate then someone asked him i said go and demonstrate but you were demonstrating now and they caught you <laughs> so what do you want to demonstrate now so it doesn't make sense. Uh, we all need to educ educate our own people. This fight is not about, it's not the renovation of a 
this fight is not the putting of a water point in the in Mancon or in Boya. It is for something bigger than that. That's where we should focus. Then our brothers and sisters who have become part and parcel of that corrupt system know that there are 100 days for the thief, one day for the house owner. If they are not careful, they will go down to with the regime. And the days of that regime are numbered. Not by us and Brazilians, who have contributed, but by their own people who can no longer sustain such criminal uh, uh, gangsters who create budget heads in the national budget to steal money, who murder their own citizens, including church men of God, to internalize themselves into power. And so that is all I can say about that. Let us focus on Amazing. Amazonians. Let us focus on then, Amazonia. Yes. And bring and then do what we can do best and bring him down. Because if we don't bring him down, there's someone will succeed him and continue to lord over us. I've not seen any position from yeah. East Cameroon who has said that well, when I if I take power, I will go to the table to address the root issues, the root cause of the problem. They have never done that. Because they know the root causes of the problem. They know it themselves more than you and me. Yeah. And so they don't as long as it can you have just said there what actually you have said there is what i wanted to use for us to conclude this conversation we, I, I actually followed a broad base of end of year addresses and you had come to who also addressed his nation and was trying to criticize the bias government and by saying that they prematurely boycotted the swiss of the dialogue or mediation process or whatever he said there I wasn't very interested in in the exact words, but the whole idea is a politician taking another side. But this is the same um, come to a few days ago. We're processing his statements, whereby he still thinks that we are just an integral part of his country, and evidently he's going to do everything maybe differently from Bia, but the exact same thing with another style to keep us under subjugation. And I'm coming to you now. Uh, Barista uh, Ghana, in conclusion, we've had a long day. It has been an educative conversation. <coughs> we able to look at the similarities and differences between uh, Ambazonia and Somaliland. What are some of, some of the lessons we can learn as Ambazonians to fast forward our recognition and sovereignty or governance of our national territory? And looking at the two heads of states in the Cameroons, addressing not just their people, but talking to the international community, you can depict intention that is encapsulated in both addresses. Um, uh, why uh, President Sako speaks to the international community in a very holistic manner, speaking truth, being real vis-a-vis -vis the situation, and inspiring his people to stay for us. One president, on the other hand, will lie. Talk to us in conclusion. Where do we go from here? What lessons do we make out of today's conversation? And how do we help our government and our nation get a free state in spite of politics east, east of the Mongol? And the, both of you will react to the same. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Comrade Paddy. Uh, there's a lot that can be said in conclusion of this. But when we look at Somalia and Somaliland, and we see Somaliland now having its independence, you see there was this great leader who existed in the United States in the 60s, his name was John F. Kennedy. And John F. Kennedy said something, John F. Kennedy said, Nations are like people. They don't have permanent friends, but they have permanent interest. Nations are like people. They don't have permanent friends, but they have permanent interest. Through the interest of Ethiopia, Ethiopia has finally decided to side with the truth, to strike a territorial deal with Somaliland, giving it access to the port. Nations are like friends. They don't have permanent friends, they have permanent interest. I would like to dial into another global thought wave. 
in that whenever you have a nation that had a federation and you tinker with the federation and the minority is above 20 percent it will always lead to secession it will always lead to secession whenever that minority and that is what, why one of the thinkers in yaoundé diodone esomba warned the government in yaoundé from the beginning of this conflict and he outlined it ambazonians are about 25 to 30 percent of cameroon and when Foncha had his dealings with Ahijo on what the new structure was going to be called, this was back in 1961, and it was published in Yaoundé, the new state was going, going to be called the Federal United Republic of Cameroon. The Federal United Republic of Cameroon. That is documented. Due to greed, Ahijo tinkered with it and instead changed towards annexing the southern Cameroons. And if you go back to that global thought, you look at the case of Somaliland, it is already leading to such. And we are not a seed. We are just restoring our sovereignty. We are an independent people. Southern Sudan, they tried to hold the South down. It led to secession. Namibia was never an integral part of South Africa by international law. South Africa, through all the apartheid regimes, thought that they could hold Namibia down as a province of South Africa. It really didn't work. Eritrea, more than 20% of the population. Ethiopia thought they could hold Eritrea down. Ethiopia had a strategic interest in Eritrea, have given them access to the port, just like French Cameroon has a strategic interest in Amb Ambazonia, holding on to the resources. It did not work. Eritrea. Seceded. East Timor from Indon in, 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 in Indonesia, same thing. It seceded. Stolen goods are always trying to go back to their owners. Stolen goods are always trying to go back to their owners. And the owners of Ambazonia are the people of Ambazonia, just like the owners of Somaliland are the people in Somaliland, finally gaining their independence. But there's something that is very peculiar about this situation with Ambazonia. It has more of a regional strategic effect as Ambazonia is pulling out than we see. They, as one of our speakers mentioned earlier, Cameroon, French Cameroon, is actually the cornerstone of Semak, France's dream of an empire in, Southern, in, in, in Central Africa. Semak has a population of about 49, 50 million. Cameroon has a population of about uh, 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 28 million or so. So Cameroon alone is more than 50% of, of Semak. How does Cameroon think it can survive economically? By holding on to Ambazonia. So as, um, as, um, as Ambazonia is pulling out, Cameroon or Semak will not have those resources to sustain itself. So goes Ambazonia, so goes French Cameroon. So goes Semak. France's empire or dreamt of empire in Africa is collapsing, one region onto another. Fast forward or maybe rewind to the case where NATO intervened in Libya to kill Gaddafi to sort of reduce the ability for Gaddafi to intervene in Africa, to sort of have resources over Libyan resources, to sort of help consolidate the French position in Africa. What did we see? The flow of weapons into the Tuareg region, Mali, Niger, Burkina Faso. And it is having the reverse effect because Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger are now thinking of having a federation. Maybe they are going to pull uh, Guinea into that, giving them access to the sea. So the intent of overthrowing Gaddafi to strengthen NATO's position in Africa, France's position in Africa, is having the exact counter effect. And I have always said that these moves to stifle and finally pocket Ambazonia started in 2013. I was in Cameroon in 2015. I met with the lawyers when we met at the old colonial house up station. They started writing lawyers. I mean, they started write, writing letters to the mini, uh, Minister of Justice because they started pushing French teachers to English schools. 
beginning to change the magistrate sending magistrate strings in civil law to govern courts that are that 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 that, that are based on common law started sending magistrates who spoke french to adjudicate cases in courts in the english zone that that where the, where the litigants are in english that started around 2013 and it's not surprising that that started just two 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 years after gaddafi died because they thought they could strengthen their position and pocket ambazonia without resistance that is having the counter effect that is going to unravel the french interest in central africa again stolen goods are always trying or crying to go back to their owners and ambazonia is a stolen good that is crying to go back to its owners and the people who still own the sovereignty of ambazonia are the people of ambazonia you and i and all our indigents all our patriots who are back there in ambazonia so the day of liberation the day of regaining our sovereignty is closer than we thought so as we look and pontificate about the situation of somaliland who we thought was not never going to gain its independence who we thought was never ever going to gain diplomatic recognition we are seeing one of africa's newest nations emerging out of somalia and there is one more who is going through the best pains of liberation of establishing its sovereignty of taking its place right there and as we look at one other issue we look at cost of production around the world increasing cost of production in china increasing the western world beginning to look at nigeria as a place where it could shift some of its industries how can we have reliable production and strategic balance in nigeria when there's a raging war next door when there's a situation waiting to have the guinea of a way wait, waiting for the gulf of guinea or that has consequences and possibilities for the gulf of guinea exploding brewing up in ambazonia nations have permanent friends or have permanent interests but they do not have permanent friends so with everything we know about how you subjugate and try to annex people with everything we know that has happened leading to this conflict in ambazonia we can say with one voice that the freedom of ambazonia is here and as i look forward to all of our patriots back at home whether they are the people in yaoundé whether they are the people in Duwala, whether they are in kambe in widikum in boya i say do not lose hope freedom is coming because we do not have a choice we do not have an option the choice is between slavery in french cameroon and independence for ambazonia aka the southern cameroons the choice is be is between freedom in french cameroon of all freedom in ambazonia and whenever a people have faced that choice whether it's in egypt where the israelis were held in captivity whether it's in yugoslavia or you or you go failure if you want to call it that way where the bosnians the herzegovinians the montenegrins were held captive under tito and later on people like milosovic they have always vowed for freedom and we from ambazonia are not a people of a lesser god that is why when president sarko says 2024 is going to be a transformative year indeed it's going to be a transformative year for ambazonia and freedom freedom to nkambe to bamenda to boya to kumba to tiko to manfe to Wilikum, to Moyoka, to Dian, to Lobe, to the entire Ambazonia is coming. But we, who are not children of a lesser God, will stand up to claim our place amongst the place of nations, will stand up to reaffirm our individ individual personalities as people from a free and sovereign nation. God bless Ambazonia. God bless our faith in 2024, for we shall rise to sing that hymn of freedom 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 at last thank you amazing barista fruit please yeah i like to throw i like to throw a little bit of a, a little bit of, of, of pepper into what my colleague has just said La Republic, the yes La Republic has a live wire they have a live wire the live wire is our resources 
our petroleum resources. La Republic has an unwritten agreement with Nigeria not to drill oil in Bakasi because it would deplete the, the other side of Bakasi that Nigeria is drilling. And that's why Nigeria would not do anything to hurt their relationship with La Republic of Cameroon by supporting Ambazonia. I used to think that it was Biafra that was a problem standing between us and Nigeria. But it's more of the natural resources, the way they are manipulated. La Republic is drilling about four or five uh, 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 drilling stations in the Gulf of Guinea in Ambazonia, in the southern Cameroon's Ambazonia. La Republic will, will continue to have a live wire even though they will not be able to sustain their train of living. My colleague has already concluded all this tends leads to one thing, our freedom this year or latest 2025. We are working and working hard to get there. But we have one handicap. I, I, I sleep and I don't sleep because I don't know whether we can sustain the financing of this struggle only through our contributions as has been the case up to now. I think we should start thinking about how we can get support, financing of this revolution to bring it to a logical end. I hate to say this on television, but that is that is something that we have to we must look at. That said, we are all determined to give it our all in 2024. Everybody must draft. Everybody must contribute. Even after drafting, you must contribute to the welfare of those who are suffering in refugee camps or those who are suffering at the home front. Taking care of taking care of wounded souls, wounded soldiers, taking care of their widows, taking care of their 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 orphans. It is our responsibility. Since we are not in the battlefront, our responsibility is to make sure that those who are at the battlefront are taken care of. And we should start reflecting from now until maybe March to see how we can improve on our finances and make sure we finish the job. Uh, I think today has been a very, very elaborate uh, 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 discussion, and I think that we 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 will be doing a favor to ourselves to stop here and continue next week. Amazing. Mister Mister, please. Uh, Thank you, Adi. Thank televiewers. Thank everybody who is here with us. I can summarize what Mr. Ghana and so have said in two words. Ambazonia has risen to fall no more. We have risen to fall no more. And that will go to complement what we've been saying for the past six, seven years. We shall fight till the last man standing. Were encouraged by the vision of President Sarko. He may dislike his face, but he has a reasonable vision that will help us overcome. The Republic is on its knees. In short, they are on the exit. They are on the exit. What happens to them is not our problem. How we sustain their fall is what concerns us. And so, my advice, as I've said, I'd said in another uh, organization that hopefully this last year, it should not even end before we get to Boya. We'll get to Boya in whole, not in pieces. As Mr. Sako has said, the doors are open in struggles, people falter. 
people make mistakes, they reflect and come back. The doors are open to our brothers and sisters who have fallen down in the last five, six, seven years. Again, I listened to this clip of Naluva B yesterday. I did not hear her blaming anybody for their plight in Nigeria, even though she never said what the meeting was about. But she simply sent out on for looking. Let us fight and fight because this fight is our ours. Victory is ours. And Bazone is for all of us. And until we fight and fight and fight, we are doomed to fail. But since we cannot fail, we must succeed. The Republic of Cameroon, I've been following this thing forever. I've not seen any fora in the East Cameroon where they have had the in depth legal analysis of our case. They never. Oh, reunification. Oh, and all that type of nonsense. But, good enough. As we put Mr. Fancher in those days, it used to be cost money to be sick. The size of Ambazonia does not make us <coughs> stupid people. Somalia, Somaliland, they were talking of today. It's just about 4 million people, half of Ambazonia. If you can stand up and say no and succeed, we should wait to stand up and say no. We have stood up. We are saying no. And we shall succeed. Thank you very much. That's amazing. Uh, Barista, Barista Ghana, the way you are swinging your hair is like you got inspired to say something. <laughs> If, no, I mean this. I just, I just, I just. The only thing I can conclude with is just to thank these brilliant lawyers for the great work that they are doing. I know how they they are dedicated. I know that God put them in the positions that they are for specific reasons. I know God turned Barisan so on that flight in France that was heading to Cameroon to come back to the United States for the reason. <laughs> I know that God put people like. Uh, barista uh, um, Be Be Beseya to work and have that, that extensive experience with, with the United Nations, which is bringing to help, help our cause for a reason. I know God yeah. has put so many of us, Ambazonians, if you are in the United States, if you are in Europe, if you are in South Africa, if you are in Australia, and you're listening, and you're listening, God put all of us in these positions for a reason. As Barista Fulso said, we need to finance the revolution. We need to finance our veterans who, who are dying. We need to take care of all the aspects of this revolution to prosecute those aspects towards a conclusion. I want to remind all of you Ambazonians who are listening, pay keen attention. This revolution could have happened in 1961 when Ahijo sent forces into southern Cameroon. We were not ready. It didn't happen then. It could have happened in 1968 when I, I, Ahijo sent Estimuna to overthrow the Southern Cameroon's parliament in Boya. It did not happen then. We were not ready. It could have happened in 1972 when they changed the bastardized Federal Republic of Cameroon with two stars to the uh, United Republic of Cameroon. It did not happen then. It could have happened in 1984 when Bivondobia changed it from the United Republic of Cameroon to the Republic of Cameroon, getting rid of the second star on that flag. It did not happen then. It could have happened in 1992 when John Frundi, who is of blessed memory, may God bless his soul, when he won the presidency and <coughs> the president with, 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 with the politicians in Yaoundé to deprive <coughs> him of that presidency. It did not happen then. It, the revolution is happening today when Ambazonians have become educated, when we when we become geographically mobile, intellectually ambitious, economically enterprising. We are well represented in all the capitals of the world. If you are in any of the capitals of the world in, in, or in any of the major countries and you are not contributing towards this revolution, know that God put you in there for a reason. God delayed this re re revolution until 2015 for a reason because we are more empowered in the diaspora to finance this revolution we are the people we have been waiting for as we start 2024 as barrister john Fu said let's draft 
Let's draft. Let's not pay attention to the distractions. Let's draft and fund this revolution, whether it's the military campaign defending our people on the ground, whether it's the diplomatic strides that we need to make. Let's draft and fund this revolution towards a triumphant conclusion. Thank you, Paddy. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, uh, gentlemen. It's been an amazing time, and I want to beat you goodbye. Right after the break, I'll be back with the breaking news. <laughs> Come on, in a winter, when you bring me come on, when I am done.
Welcome back, fellow Amazonians, ladies and gentlemen, to this very special broadcast. Even as we conclude the amazing show we had this evening with the barristers, um, Amazonia this week with yours in service, Tapari King, we had a, a deep discussion. We were receiving a breaking news that two forces of occupation from the Republic to Cameroon have just been neutralized by the Amazonian State Armies in the axis, the, the Ngokitunja Bui axis. And as we speak, according to reports, the first that was first published by Amazonia's main proxy media platform, that's Kemi Ashu, a driver caught in crossfire also dies. We are told that the Bingo Hospital has been set ablaze by the bees of beer. Nonetheless, today's show has been very educational, analyzing the turning tables with hopes renewed for Amazonia who we'll think that the impact of Somaliland's recognition on Amazonia could produce positive results. As we close the chapter, this chapter on Amazonia, let's take a moment to reflect on the progress and challenges we have witnessed. The news of neutralizing forces of occupation brings mixed emotions, but it gladdens the heart of many who are still hoping that Amazonia deserves to be a free nation. But it is also highlights the resilience and determination of the Amazonian State Army. Our hearts go out to those who are the civilian population who is affected by this violence, and we stand in solidarity with the people of Amazonia at the home front. The educational discussion on today's show have given us hope and renewed determination for the future of Amazonia. Let's remember that even in the face of adversity, there is always room for positive change and progress. As we bid farewell to this show, let's carry the lessons and inspiration with us. Let us continue to support and advocate for a totally free Amazonia, free from occupation imperialism. And may the impact of Somaliland's recognition bring about positive results within the ranks of diplomacy and governance. Thank you for joining us on this journey and let us keep the spirit of Amazonia alive in our hearts. Until next time, I'm Tapa the King. Bye-bye. <laughs> yes, entertainment. Yeah. Oh, you didn't end this over. Oh, 